Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests. Other versions say a kingdom of priests. Are we together? And the Lord began to teach us how that that king priest dimension is necessary to be able to capture the full import of God's idea of dominion and legislature. We did teach last week that if the dimension of the king alone is manifested then there are other um, aspects of the wisdom the grace the power of god that will be missing and if we only focus on our priesthood and forget god's system of legislature as kings we will still rob god from manifesting the full import of his dimensions hallelujah but the emphasis was it was an attempt to teach us how to preserve not only to advance but to preserve the secrets we call it the ordinances of God are we together one of the most tragic thing that can happen to a people and a territory is to have an interface of generations that cannot connect spiritually are we together so you have a generation of men and women who love god and honor him and passionately seek him and then you will find out that there is a gap of 10 or 20 years and the generation that arises from that breed completely are antagonistic to the values and the passion of the generation before them history is full of territories cities nations localities that pioneered certain strange and notable dimensions of God. But sadly, those dimensions were robbed eventually. They were hijacked by the inability of those who were used to pioneer those revivals. They knew how to birth revivals, but they did not know how to preserve it. Are we together? Preservation is very important. It matters to God. That the generations that come, that our children and our children's children, they must be able to hold on to the template of our convictions. And there is a system designed to make your child and your child's child know and believe your God. There is nothing as dangerous and disheartening for a father as seeing his child not serve his God. He says, as for me and my house. Not as for me alone. Not as for me and my wife. Transgenerational relevance is important in the kingdom. That the scope of our relevance must not just transcend our lifetime or the, the jurisdiction of our relevance as apportioned by God. Kingdom advance is very important. But we must be able to culture ourselves into the spiritual system apportioned by God to preserve his ordinances. Every time I study history, my heart is broken. They will tell you about cities like Spokane. They will tell you about several places. Once upon a time, Europe was the center of revival. Are we together? Fire was burning all across the length and the breadth of those territories. And now you would hardly, hardly, thank God for 
the things that are happening there was a time in the city of welch there was a revival that broke out men and women caught fire just by reading the move of god on a newspaper people received impartations they got born again they were filled with the holy spirit growth disappeared from people just reading about a revival but the system of preservation was not there so our history books are full of the moves of God mighty things dimensions that our generation has not even entered into but then most of them the lifespan of that extent of impact was the lifespan of the one who pioneered that move usually with the death or the backsliding of the pioneer the move dies and dies to a point that it is buried and there is no monument in that territory that testifies that God once moved. Everybody shout God forbid. God forbid. There must be ordinances preserved that in life or in death they will know once upon a time God, God moved across this nation, moved across this city and there are testaments, not just physical buildings and monuments but a heritage, a spiritual heritage that has refused to leave. When you travel across the West, I travel across these areas a lot and I am profoundly touched at how they respect monuments that remind you of certain notable events that once happened in those regions. It could be places of worship, it could be physical monuments, it could be lots of things. I remember one time a few years ago when Kogi and Pastor Alpha was taking us around and we were seeing some of the monuments. They showed me certain places where wars happened. They showed me certain historical things. There must be a system of preserving not just the, the heritage of being a Christian, but the extent to which God moved must also be captured. It is important that our children know that not only were we Christians, we were men of fire. It, it must, it is important that our children must know that once upon a time, a preacher can be preaching and the power of God can touch someone miles away. Let me tell you something. When Satan finds out that it is difficult for him to capture a generation, he gives up on that generation and goes to our children and starts growing with them. Satan can be patient for as long as the generation that has sponsored God's move fades away. So he will be silent. And sometimes we will mistake his silence as our breakthrough in the spirit. Not knowing that it's an intentional deceit. For many years, he can be quiet. Until those who were at the hallmark of alignment, allowing the purposes of God to be birthed. Either through old age or whatever exhaustion, when they fade away, then he grows with a generation. A generation that do not know God. A generation that does not know Pharaoh again. A generation that does not know Joseph. Today, there are certain buildings that were once centers of revivals. They are clubs today. Do you know why? There was no system of preserving the move of God. That once upon a time, this was a place of encounter. It was a place where people would run to God with their challenges and roll up and down in zaria here there have been physical locations that because of the extent of the incense that arose to heaven and the sacrifices that conveyed those times they became portals literally but many things have happened to them oh yeah Oh, oh. That there is a way you have been trained to call upon the name of the Lord. And one day you will watch your child in limbo and confusion. You have not taught him. What secret did you carry that made your ministry prosper? Now your son is 22 years. Are you not surprised at the children of some of those who pioneered moves? 
and you are wondering what happened where did the power go to Gehazi why did you not receive from Elisha what happened there are mantles and graces that are still on earth but are not available for use because the system of preservation and transference was not there the West is full of great prophetic movements many of them died at infancy largely due to illiteracy and a quick capture of hell however there is still a heritage of the eyes that can see and the ears that can hear there are still those moves are we together yes our soils and territories are full of stories you meet an old man and he tells you it was in this location one day rain was falling everywhere but you see this house you are looking at that is now a beer parlor rain did not fall there and then you ask who was there they said there was one white man we don't know his name we just know that he came from america and spent two weeks there the moment he left people started falling under the anointing on the street where then is that mantle what was the formula nobody was taught he left or died and you find out that in that territory the most powerful person hardly knows god guessing all around we must preserve the curriculum a portion for us to know god my generation must know the god i know not the god they want to know they must understand his power to the extent to which we allowed him move and this is what this teaching is aimed at providing us to open us up to the systems in the spirit that are responsible for proof for preserving divine ordinances so that one day these little kids playing around that little boy can hold the mic and say i remember the name my father called god when i wanted him to heal, to heal people there was a song my father raised every time the power of god was about to move whenever i saw my father close his eyes i understood the meaning if we ignore our children we are going to destroy a generation most of our parents will tell you they attended TL Osborne's crusade. Correct? They attended most of these crusades. They will tell you what happened. Some of the generals, some of our parents went abroad at the times of those movements and they had the privilege to go to those cathedrals. They saw raw power. They saw prophecy. They saw grace. They saw transformation beyond the church walls. And today they sit down with sicknesses ravaging them. And you say, Daddy, do you believe God? He says, I remember, I remember. In 1971, I remember dear Lost Born Crusade. What happened? Preservers of the ordinances of God. Are we blessed? I have done my best to study revivals and to study the life of the generals. And every time I study, I see gaps gaps between one generation and another what did smith wigglesworth know that we do not know what did Catherine kuman know that we do not know even if they made mistake what wrong did they do we are not even we, we, we only talk about the mistakes we don't say what if people walk at that dimension and they still slipped will it not be wise to find out If I were alive in the days of the generals, I would not yet be qualified to hold a mic. I would be a chief usher. With the level of spiritual development now that we brag around and make noise about, you would dare not hold a mic in those days. No. Read the Bible and see those who worked in welfare departments. The welfare department of the early apostles were the crusaders of our generation. If you were ever given an opportunity to speak to people, the number of the prophetic eyes that screened you, and all of them would have to unanimously pass you. 
when you study the history of the move of God in Nigeria, that was how men like Apostle Babalola were detected. They were not detected by desire. It took the eyes of the spirit and the supervision of a very strong apostolic council that knew God. Not You don't come and lie and talk nonsense with fake visions. <clears throat> Are we together? John G. Lake had those we call healing technicians. The condition to be qualified to be called a healing technician was that for starters, when you came, they would give you a sick body and give you 30 days. How many days? Any sick body, whether one leg and the other amputated, that's not the issue. Whatever allocation reaches you, your assignment is to turn that dead body to a miracle. 30 days. If you could not heal that person within 30 days, John Lake will politely tell you, we have seen you are trying, but please go and join the congregation. Very simple. Spokane became the healthiest city in the world because one man. But the question is not the impact. The question is the transference. Where is it? Where is it? It was said about E.W. Kenyon, great man of faith, that that man raised the dead at will. Raising the dead that we talk so much about was a normal occurrence. Are we together now? There was a time a tractor broke the legs of a farmer and pieces the bones like pieces. Your leg is pieces. And when that happened, the Bible says, well, not the Bible, history says that, um, what's his name now? Kenyon. Kenyon came and just looked at the legs and the bones began, you know, I, the book of Ezekiel, like that, the man's leg. Not gradual healing. Right there. And he says, stand up and go away. A man, a man died during the time of St. Patrick for six months. How many months? Six months. When St. Patrick got there, he wrote his signature, wrote his signature on the grave and said they should open it. They brought the man alive. These were men who knew the ordinances of God. There are levels of spiritual manifestations you cannot guess. The level of accuracy required to produce that outcome does not allow guessing. Are we together? One of the Catholic priests, they were building a cathedral and the wood stopped and there was no money to complete it. Go and read your history. He held the wood and, and just continued moving. And that was how it kept elongating. Today, if a little leg grows out of another, people shout around and say, how are we sure? What a shame on us. We have lost a, a, a manuscript that was freely given to a generation that made illiterate, ordinary men and women do business with God. Hallelujah. I had the opportunity to meet Prophet Kobus before I went to be with the Lord. And I remember having a conversation with him. And he was telling me what Lester Sumrall told him about what Smith Wiggles were told Lester Sumrall and some of the moves of God and some of the prophecies that would come in our generation. And I was stunned. Smith Wiggles were told Lester Sumrall, he said, Look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. Find young men who are serious and transfer it to them. Preserve us of the ordinances of God. Once upon a time, Apostle Babalola was thirsty and there was no water. He understood a key and he opened the heavens and water came out of a rock. Ha. Brothers and sisters, this is not the realm of trial and error. These men were custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. Are we together? Archbishop Benson Idahosa went round the world as an African. No land could resist him. I remember 
One time Benny Hinn was laying hands on people and he got to Archbishop Benson Idahosa and he removed his cap. When Benny Hinn touched him, he fell under the anointing and he put his cap back. He said, thank God he was an African that drew you. I remember one crusade that they were having together with Benny Hinn. And when he was praying, trying to charge the atmosphere and rain wanted to fall. It also came and collected the mic. He said, rain is falling. Those who are sick, lay your hands there. There was no time to waste. He didn't answer whether they had faith or not. He understood a system to force their miracle. A guy's face was bent and he came to him for healing. And he said, look up. And the guy looked up. He said, God, this is your image. If this is how you look, leave this man like that. custodians of the ordinances now some of you it's a shame that some of us are just hearing this for the first time yet this is our spiritual heritage when you start training children from primary school you teach something called social studies you teach them the history of their nation you teach them the advantages of being a citizen of that nation why you are preserving that sense of nationhood we have lost that sense of spiritual nationhood we do not understand the extent and that's why our faith is not strong because we are not familiar with the dealings of God today someone is favored in one month he becomes prosperous and we shout about it we insult fathers of faith for buying just a little land have you not read about Alexander Dewey he was not elected but he was the spiritual mayor of Illinois he built a city single-handedly he was not just a prophet he was a multi-millionaire it was said his wealth was so mysterious people became afraid he built a city well his opinions were had their issues here and there but he built a city with a hospital in it today is still called Zion City in Illinois you get there once he was 12 on the dot everywhere around the city you had to stop and pray once upon a time Catherine Kuman was teaching and someone came into the meeting sorry Maria Woodward Ita was teaching and someone came and was laughing at her and the moment she was laughing at her she said God judge you her tongue swallowed up immediately to be bigger than the size of her head after three days of prayer warriors praying that tongue refused to go down and they advised the person to come and apologize we came before the church and apologized to her she laughed and slapped the tongue it went down in their presence are we together these people it was their life it was not sure. William Branham would stand for hours and watch a congregation and not say anything because he said he was waiting for his angel to come. You say you are seeing angels today, they say you are diabolic. You collected power from somewhere. This guy stood and did not do anything. And then eventually, all of a sudden, a physical wind Will start blowing in the church physically and all of a sudden you say here comes the angel and turn and start giving a level of word of knowledge and prophecy that very few people on earth will ever get there there is no mortal man on earth now i know who is working in william branham's dimension of prophetic accuracy they did not have videos to capture their meetings strange manifestations But something happened as powerful as these moves are the children had the opportunity to learn without guessing they had the opportunity to learn without trying with the little dimension of grace that God has exposed to me I've had the privilege of teaching people with a level of accuracy according to what God has given and have watched a reproduction imagine that you were mentored by Smith Wigglesworth imagine he told you what God taught him imagine what happened to him when he went to heaven imagine that he told you imagine that you stood side by side with him they brought somebody with a condition called an alligator skin where a skin the top skin had rot and they brought him before a allen 
A. Allen looked at him and laid his hands and removed the old skin like that. Like you remove another hand and a new hand appears and he threw it away. Jaco, one of the greatest manifestors of the faith of God. I watched this. It's not like they told me. They brought someone with cancer and he sat down on a chair. He looked at the neck. He held the cancer and removed it. Did you hear what I said? Not that he held it and it went down. He removed it. Everybody see I'm holding it. Shame on the devil. In Smith Wigglesworth book, his own confession, that one time a spirit appeared in his room. Devils appearing in his room. And the room was shaking and rocking. And he came out. When he came out, he looked at the parlor and he saw a spirit sitting. And he turned back. Don't waste my time. He went to go and sleep. Not pray. Not fast. Not bind. Sleep. I thought it was an angel that brought a message. But since it's you, Satan, enjoy the chair and go back. This is not, I claim I am powerful. Uh -uh. This is a settled, this is truly the seated in heavenly places mentality. We are missing something. The little we have been able to capture is what we are bragging with. But there must be a system. And while we trust God, that the spirit of God who opened them up to those portals will open us also to those portals. Listen, in as much as we are trusting God for those dimensions, hear me, we must start taking cognizance of the system of preserving spiritual heritages. Do you know the mystery that governs the move of God in Koinonia? Do you know why the power of the Holy Spirit moves so lavishly? It's not just because an anointed man is holding the mic. There is a formula. Will we go with this thing and shine alone and enjoy alone and build empires alone? Or are we going to translate these things so that someone somewhere will enter another meeting in a city and all of a sudden just holding the mic, you are just saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. And you engage that mystery and you watch people rising from wheelchairs. You are not, this is not trial and error that you are moving in a dimension of power and grace and illumination. Preservers of spiritual ordinances. Let me tell you the truth. Don't believe everybody is trying this thing. There are people who have received as a blueprint. The ordinances are portioned to them as a level. They know it. They can operate it any day, any time, and it will not fail, regardless of what the limitations are. You must understand this. These things are ordinances. They are given. It's like a manuscript that the Spirit of God gives you. You use it anywhere it will work. And no devil. There is a mystery that casts out devils. It's not just go, go, no. To draw from me you again, again, again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. that are given to people now please sit down I'm just doing a recap on last week's teaching listen the Bible tells us that the physical things we see on earth are an adumbration a prophetic depicting of the way the realm of the spirit works that means you can look at your physical environment and understand how the, the realm of the spirit works now the earth is distributed territorially there is the concept of governance and territory is that true 
every territory has a system of governance every territory listen carefully has mineral resources this is how it is spiritually God's design and ordination is such that he distributed his dimension to every territory there is a curriculum of God that the men and women of God in every territory must be able to bring down and supply the people in that territory otherwise there is a kind of growth that will never be experienced the reality of having spiritual platforms in every territory where the purposes of the kingdom is not only taught but brought is one of the keys I taught you I taught you last week listen carefully that kingdom advance is territorial although the mandate is global but the approach is per territory so God apportions a territory like Zaria and commits to us and the assignment is he says there is a dimension of me that I want the people who are within this soil to know and understand and then he searches for men and mandates them to align in a way and manner that allows him to reveal that your marking in the spirit is based on how much of that dimension was safely brought and revealed to the people you can know whether God has a system that represents his presence in the territory you can always know you don't need to find out how many churches no you don't need to find out how many men of God no it is a it is a a spiritual way of discerning one of it is the extent of the dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom and a system that preserves it there is a way our fathers prayed and got results many young people pray but we pray anyhow and pray the way we wanted because nobody mentored us in the art of prayer Ah, yes we were mentored to spend long hours and dissipate energy shouting but these guys had there was a mystery Elijah was up the mountain and they brought a band of 50 people and he said if I be a man of God Job was frustrated in his life Job said God I need you here and God came what formula did Job use to invoke God and God came the Bible never said God said me God appeared Job you called me the wife of Job said cause God and die that word is mysterious that means there is a code you can speak on earth and die immediately he said cause God and die not that means it's within your power you know the formula for death Job you know it why don't you end your life and Job said no I still want to live Please understand what I'm teaching you. What was the formula? There is something that men can say from earth to heaven and their life ends immediately. That's what the wife of Job was saying. Do it. And Job said, no, 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 no. These are my contemplations. These are the things that keep me pursuing God passionately regardless of the little results here and there you must bench yourself by a high standard so that no matter what happens you are you are rated by a standard that is higher than the existing standard in your generation it's not pride it is a simple search to press into a depth of God and deliver to a generation it's not for the purpose of making a name There were mysterious secrets of wealth hidden in the Bible. The Bible is full of people who tapped into a dimension of supply that we are just trying to learn. Cities came out of recession overnight. Those ordinances are still available. When Elisha took the mantle of Elijah, 
he struck it in a way that the river divided the river never divided for elijah or elisha the river divided for whoever had that grace and that includes you if we stood before the red sea today we'll call architects to build bridges those guys say pass that thing and let's go <coughs> if god tells me to ask him one thing i will say lord please take me in a vision to ancient egypt i want to see the display of the power of god through moses i just want to be led like ezekiel and watch and watch moses in that temple and watch pharaoh look at him and watch the the stench of witchcraft and a man comes immune for moses was not afraid for himself he was on assignment Kai. these people were strange men no wonder hebrews said the earth was not worthy of them when you mention those we think the earth is not worthy of now we mention mother teresa mandela the earth is worthy of them there are people the bible says the earth is not worthy in other words they did the earth a favor by passing they were not ordinary men when we get to heaven we will see the constituents of their design they only carried bodies that were young there had to be an ancient mystery inside them and the bible says on the count of that the earth is not worthy of them we shared a few things that would help us let me run through them and then we'll finish up we didn't finish last week and my assignment is to finish it today and then we'll pray that number one the first key to advancing and preserving the move of God in a territory is a system of consistent prayer everybody say prayer and not just random need driven prayer the ministry of warfare and intercession must never go out of fashion if we want to preserve the move of God in a territory the ministry of intercession and warfare now i know that we come from different places and we all have different ideas about warfare and the rest but let me tell you one truth based on the authority of the word of god the bible never left us in the dark as to the fact that territories have controlling powers apportioned to them and nobody prevails over a territory until you sustain capacity to subdue the powers that control a territory when you see people thrive in a territory listen carefully it is not because the power of darkness is not there it's because they have sustained a system to keep them at bay are we together let me tell you one big secret about koinonia listen to me if you find yourself in this place that you come and sit down with koinonia half of your miracle has already happened believe me i know this sounds like pride forgive me if it sounds so that you were able to successfully leave your house if god opens your eyes to see the warfare that happens have you not seen people come and sit down and immediately praise and worship starts they feel like easing themselves to go no there are spirits walking behind the scene because someone's miracle is about to come someone's life is about to change all of a sudden a stranger starts calling somebody just when prayer is about to start no sir they are not normal every service in koinonia is warfare that's why we never come into any service casual we start praying from the week the prayer department is praying every department is praying i'm praying everyone is praying and when we come you see the things that the power of god does and you are wondering no satan is also watching he is shocked at how he's resisted are we together yes, sir. you are not going to build that house just because you think you have money when all the economics are ready the realm of the spirit must be taken care of are we together just because a brother sees you and he likes you and you go back carelessly thinking you are fine is a is a joke in this wicked world that we live in you lie down to sleep and a strange woman appears to you and say in case they have not told you let me tell you that i've been here for a long time I am the one who has stopped all the 11 ladies in your family from marriage and not even you will do it 
and you get up and say well it's just a, a, a nice dream and you take orange juice and you find out that the day the brother said he wants to see your people his business scattered overnight his life scattered overnight one ear refused to hear and the guy says no I've not even married you and this is happening and he just finds his way quietly but those who understand that every territory must have men and women who settle realities in the realm of the spirit you engage strong warfare and intercession at all times not just when you have a dream about danger sometimes when you have that dream it may be too late the bible says to be instant in season he spake a parable to the end that men ought always 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 to pray one of the greatest assets you can teach your child is the ministry of prayer and intercession that's why i love it when our children join us when we are praying let them join they may be playing and mimicking the tongues just leave them one day you will be surprised to hear that they laid hands on their classmates in the play class the power of god does not care which hand whether the hand is the hand of a young child or an adult the moment that hand is aligned the power of god will flow through it are we together number two i taught us that the second key to preserving the ordinances of god in a territory is the regular convergence of believers the regular convergence of believers within that territory believers must have systems of regular convergence for the purpose of training for the purpose of building for the purpose of mentoring and for the purpose of receiving the current blueprint of the spirit he that hath an ear not everybody has that ear let him hear what the spirit saith what he's saying not what he said one of the worst things that can happen to you is to be where God was you must follow him if he moves this way that is your destiny if he moves this way that is your destiny the moment you isolate yourself from him then he's no longer a shepherd and all of a sudden things start going wrong in your life number three an open display of real miracles signs and wonders we cannot preserve the emphasis listen 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 believers hear me this has nothing to do with being called into the miracle ministry if you want men to have memories of the moves of God there must be supernatural manifestations of the power of God beyond the four walls of the church healings and miracles testimonies per second per second that remind people that God is alive are we together someone wants to laugh at God and he just sees a car that should have a ghastly motor accident and God delivered them immediately the person remembers you see him say thank god oh thank god when a when a territory forgets god then there are hardly experiences that keep him in their minds we must emphasize god through miracles signs and wonders and keep people aware of him when you see coca-cola every day it's enshrined in your mind you know how coke looks like educated or not the moment they say coca-cola we all know it that's how it must be so that even an unbeliever outside when he hears people singing God is a miracle worker he won't lie that he does not understand the meaning of that song he may not be born again but we have institutionalized the power of God in a territory it becomes impossible for people to mock God they may be critics but they know the truth Jesus walked upon the earth he moved in such dimension of power and grace although the scribes criticized him in the day nicodemus came by night john 3 and said rabbi we know he didn't say i know all of us those critics we know the truth we know that thou art a man sent from god what convinced them for no man can do these things not say these things no man can do these things i write to you all excellent theophilus of all that jesus began 
go to do and teach not teach alone do and teach we are a generation of a performance there must be a performance and the performance must be beyond falling down results results that defy science results that create arguments results that stops an unbeliever from sleeping in the night and he sees this every time god is revealed it's a message that pounds in the heart of someone who does not know god it forces men to acknowledge that there is a god because they cannot explain the synergy behind that miracle when people begin to say there is no god it is because the sons of light have refused to show them god are we together remember paul and silas and the episode of the jailer the bible says they were jailed tied hands and foot and the bible says they prayed and they sang suddenly there was an earthquake an earthquake came and rattled the entire prison and then the bible says that the chains broke from their hands and the bible says that while they were singing the praise and the worship the jailers all of them had them i'm sure they were laughing stupid people useless prisoners you won't sit down in one place and while they were singing all of a sudden there was a physical earthquake the hands the chains were bound and then all of a sudden the bible says all doors were open and it was time for paul and silas to go out and the jailer wanted to kill himself because he was tantamount to death and he said no you don't have to rush calm down we are here that man got born again immediately one miracle will answer one thousand questions all these useless explanations we keep giving let me tell you every critic already knows the truth explaining to them is a waste of time you answer by a superior performance of the power the grace the wisdom of God not to make a name not to build an empire but to reveal Jesus to make him manifest number four and that's where we stopped last week intentional mentorship of younger believers not young believers we are young younger believers if the ordinances of God must be preserved in a territory there must be an intentional system of mentorship that raises the younger believers and it starts right from nursery class primary school etc etc there must be a system of intentional mentorship when we have a generation of people who are ignored do you know by the time an average young man gets to 15 largely he or she their lives have been wrecked beyond repair are we together we must be able to capture people from the ages of these little children and show them god let their lingua franca be Jesus and Jesus only. We mentor them. Gone are the days where people commit themselves to investing in children ministry and young people. Society has tainted people. The moment you focus on children, they say it's because you're a young man. And in, in a bid to manage that embarrassment of not looking small or a child, we have ignored them. And Satan says, if you ignore them, I'm, I'm available. More than available. There must be a mentorship of younger ministers younger ministers they must be mentored to understand but the only challenge i have with mentorship is that the mentor himself must have an encounter with god otherwise we are going to mentor our limitations to people it will be a transference of limitations there are many people is because of mentorship they stop believing god there are dimensions of god they would have believed but a mentor created a theology out of his limitation and forced them to believe it and raped their potentials for entering superior dimensions in the spirit. There were people who began to have visions, dreams, prophetic encounters until they met a so-called mentor and he told them it was diabolism and they casted it out and closed the door against the Holy Spirit. Not everybody can mentor. Being in ministry for a long time does not qualify you for mentorship. You can be doing the wrong thing in ignorance for many years. It's an election of grace. God must train people with a track record and a testimony of walking with the Holy Spirit. Number five. The fifth way 
that the ordinances of God, the program of God is preserved over territories is influence. 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 God must find people in high places that are in places of influence enough to supervise the policies that preserve God in a territory. Are we together? For a very long time, the church has been indoctrinated to resent influence. We have been indoctrinated into believing that every time people aspire to rise to prominent positions, to sit upon the notable places of several spheres of influence is a proof of carnality. So we create, we have created a theology that you either be carnal and influential or spiritual and private. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was a man of influence. What is influence? The ability to mold your understanding into people without using force. The ability to compel people to buy into your beliefs, to buy into your, your paradigms, to buy into your perceptions without using force. You use results. Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 18. The verse of emphasis is verse 10. But for reference purposes, you can put verse 7 to verse 18. But let's look at just verse 10 for the sake of time. Help us media, verse 10. Acts chapter 18 and verse 10. It says, for I am with you and no one will attack or hurt you. What is the reason? For I have many people in this city there are many people who call upon my name in this city and the fact that i have several people is an advantage to my agenda are we together now that when god has many people in places of influence it was the influence of joseph of arimathea that brought down the body of jesus it was not prayer that brought jesus from the cross he would have died and remained there on the cross but a man of influence joseph of arimathea who had business concerns with herod told him that look i want the body of jesus and on grounds of that partnership and friendship he said all right no problem he will be buried in my own tomb influence played a role in our salvation We have entertained a weak and a beggarly church with no voice policies and policies come up from an antichrist government men and women who do not know god neither do they have respect for his ordinances they are the ones that sit in the high places and spirits manipulate them to making life difficult for the church and we are here praying in tongues throwing ourselves from pillar to post and rejecting influence there are two principal ways the kingdom advances. One is evangelism, two is influence. None of them can replace another. Evangelism and influence. The gospel is a message and it's an ideology. It's not a message alone. The message of the gospel is the revelation of the love of the Father demonstrated in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus and the response of man to that act of love and benevolence. The result of which is the life of God imparted into man. That is the message of the gospel. But there is the ideology of the gospel. A system that seeks to enthrone Christ and his value systems. First in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human existence. Here's the great commission. Go ye into, not go ye around. Enter a system, cosmos, the social system. The mountains that represent the spheres of influence that govern the cultures of people. Let me have representations there. He says, do not be afraid. Why? No one will hurt you because I have many people there. When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. He says, when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. When the vice chancellor of a university calls upon the name of the Lord it's an advantage for the advancement of the kingdom within that territory if the wealthiest man in Zaria
calls upon the name of the Lord is an advantage to the growth of the church. I believe in influence. I never will reject influence. God has blessed me with influential people, some fathers of faith, some great people connected to this ministry directly or indirectly. Great men of influence scattered across the military, scattered across business, scattered across every mountain. I will never be indoctrinated to rejecting them because their relevance will show. When you want to ward the gates of hell, they will come physically through men. And God, there is only a limit. There are certain doors that will never open for you. You need somebody already in there who has the purposes of the kingdom. Are we together? There are many cities that refuse to sell land for believers. But certain men of influence and certain pastors that God has granted influence will come to that land and a call will come directly. Oga governor, Oga lands and survey coordinator, release 10 hectares now for this church. Their advantage can increase the economy of this land. And all they say is yes sir. May God put someone around your destiny that knows God and has influence. Influence can shorten your journey. All this prayer and fasting we pray out of unbelief is because we are using one system of the kingdom to remedy another. Influence can answer a lot of prayers. Are we together? Influence can answer a lot of prayers. A lot of prayers. God's people must find their way to the high places of life to represent his interest in the places that matter. In the places that matter. Imagine if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus. He would win more souls than many crusades combined. Whether the Jesus was a mistake or it was intentionally so. Are we together? I shared with us last week that Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They have never packed a stadium for a crusade. They are using one weapon that we have ignored. Influence. 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 We live in a world that is governed by influence. Brothers and sisters, we need it. Whoever has influence sets the rules and forces you to work with the rules. I made up my mind that I will never pastor a spiritual and a weak people spirituality and influence can go hand in hand and that's the template i've chosen so i'll continue to pray for you and teach you that you rise and become great people in ministry here at the level that god has brought us there is hardly anything we want at this level that we cannot get because of the power of influence almost everything we will need at this level is a call away a call away a call away if it's military might, a call away. Are we together? If it's some kind of legal stance, it's a call away. The power of influence. If anybody comes and tries to bully the ministry and oppress the lives of people, God has strategically placed people in areas of influence to do that. Influence is important. You reject it, you will pay for it. Are we together? You reject it, you will pay for it. We need influence every time. We need influence everywhere. If there is an emergency case right now and we need attention in the hospital, by the grace of God, he has given us influence to call some of the highest people that God can grant grace and make sure that we mobilize assistance for people. You see, believers are not taught how to live in a socioeconomic environment. We are taught how to live in church, but we are not taught the wisdom for living. And it is the lack of this understanding that destroys us. A day will come, you will need help. And ministry, the work of God will suffer greatly without it. It will require influence. Every week you see people here, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Have people, the bosses that come from almost if not 100% of all the drivers they are not Christians but by 9 o'clock they come and wait here all of them and they are watching the meeting it's called influence 
are we together don't reject influence it is when influence is mismanaged that it can destroy people there are people here by the grace of God and with all humility they have gotten jobs overnight because of influence oh how are you sir there are students who had no business graduating but influence took them and they just left because you know somebody that can favor and help them hello sir please can you help ABCD there are people who have gotten admission because of influence there are people who have gotten promotion because of influence the church has become grounded because we have hated and rejected influence and we keep praying the answer leaves the realm of the spirit but the system that makes it manifest influence being one of them is largely ignored we must receive grace for influence hallelujah there are people who have been at the police station and the situations around their lives would have been grievous but because of the power of influence one call officer inspector i'm the one calling a b c d e f g and it's, it's over unbelievers understand this you can catch a criminal a capon take him to prison in two hours one call makes one call makes one call abroad returns one call back to nigeria and the person is out walking on the street and then a sincere believer who loves god but is ignorant of the systems of god is kept and locked god must give us influence in the name of jesus christ god has helped us as a ministry i tell you the truth and i say it without humility god has given us influence and we have we have honored our way into those influence are we together it matters you have influence to the degree to which men rise to remedy any challenges that stand before you it will happen in ministry i remember there was i think a, a few months or so ago or weeks there was someone that wanted to just make some trouble because of the overflow and all of that and before all those troubles will rise people arose from everywhere and said no way no way you are you are a joker we have been blessed beyond imagination that's the power of influence i never had to go there to find out what happened influence many of you may never know but there's a gentleman now serving five years five months or so in the prison during one of the night vigils he wanted to steal a car somewhere there but because we had influence and access to military might they were caught and apprehended and handled and i didn't even know it was the next day while we we're on our way to the trip the protocol department told me oh they got intelligence let me tell you something if there is a crisis god forbid in zaria within one hour we have built a system of immunity we are not stupid people with in less than five minutes whatever needs to be communicated to every koinonia member will reach the person and the relevant structures for military might and influence will be put we are not stupid people we are living in a we will the horse is prepared for battle safety is of the lord but the horse will not sleep you are living in a wicked world don't assume you are not living in one are we together when the devil uses men to rise against you do you have enough influence or are you connected to people of influence that can come and speak the purposes of god hallelujah we must never reject influence brothers and sisters please take what i'm telling you seriously there are churches today who have refused to get land because of influence there are churches today who have never gotten certain opportunities because they have ignored influence they rejected it they resented it and it left them completely influence we go to the bank and by the privilege of god's influence many things that should not be done ordinarily are done to us because of influence if you reject influence you will never never experience certain dimensions of god influence is not just christians influence is god lifting you 
to a platform where you can get the loyalty of men you can get the whatever it is that they represent hallelujah the school of ministry students will soon be graduating and while we were trying to uh, prepare for their graduation and so on and so forth they were talking one time about their uniforms what they would wear and one one of the students of the school of ministry is here he just got up and said look i can get you graduation gowns the only reason why they are not using it is simply because there are more students than the gowns can take but influence that's something somebody can be praying for three days and say lord wouldn't you raise somebody no many of the need driven prayers are products of lack of spiritual intelligence influence can answer many prayers do not be afraid i have many people many people many people could it be that our parents have rejected influence to their detriment could it be that several people across have rejected influence to their detriment influence is powerful powerful i remember when boko haram struck Mubi. many of them may be listening from here now and all of that destabilized the church the entire church in Mubi. everything scattered men of god had to go people were killed and all of that and god granted us the access through the power of influence to be part of those that God is using to bring the church within that territory back next month and back there again what a privilege to strengthen the believers and call everybody back again and say the purposes of God must thrive on this land that's the power of influence are we together I believe in influence I am friends to politicians talk whatever rubbish they are Christians many of them have gotten born again many of them know God and they have the purposes of God I advise some of them I pray for them I'm not looking for their money God has been faithful we ignore these people in the name of spirituality and when there is need for help nothing happens I remember I think it was in Niger State one of the year I, 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 I don't know before the, the last election or so the Khan people wanted me to go and talk they usually have men of God that go and talk with the government you know and talk with them and the last time they took one young guy the guy went there and did a lot of very naughty things you understand what I'm saying people misuse because they don't understand the protocol of greatness I've had the privilege to advise people high and mighty they love me there are things that influence have brought to my life have brought to this ministry there is no good thing that comes into this land that we are not aware of. There are systems of influence that grant us access to the choices of everything. Please believe in the power of influence. Otherwise, you are going to pay for it in, in unbelievable ways. I've shared with you a humorous story about a young guy in NDA and the Emir of Zaria where the guy wanted to get admission and he failed the test among other reasons they said there was a height requirement to join the nda and they said he fell short by a few inches sorry we cannot take you and the guy got angry and came one person connected to the other and the news got to the emir and the emir said that they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir has added the height of that man everybody say influence do you think they took him yes the person may probably have finished now the worthy soldier influence his destiny would have been jeopardized he would have been a farmer somewhere loitering in, in, in all kinds of pain and and doing it they, they, just a little farming the back of his house in pain but influence brought him back to destiny don't reject influence don't reject influence i will never reject influence if god grants me access to great people i will talk to them most of us know billy graham to be an evangelist a dimension of him that is hardly known was that he was an influential man he was a mentor to several presidents of America it was not luck he literally pressed for it he said how many times Billy Graham will write letters to the presidents and they would turn him down they would throw away the letters but he continued because he believed that he was destined among other things to be an advisor to presidents from today and um, not even from today it's, it's been like that for 
many years I, I believe every president goes to pay homage to him regardless of what their spiritual orientation is about God is the power of influence will cause men to do things for God that they had no business doing because of influence in the name of Jesus Christ when you go to Dubai you go to China they have never been under pressure to learn English because of influence they speak whatever language influence translates it to those who are the benefactors of whatever they represent Chinese people have never seen I remember one keyboard years ago that my father bought from wherever I don't know where he got that keyboard brought it excitedly at home and said look there's a, a very classic keyboard and I looked at it and it was a toy full of Chinese I looked at everything and I said how in the world are we supposed to I mean there is no, even on you know like English slash China it was pure I'm sure it's one of those things that were just shipped into the country I remember the frustration many times when I'm trying to look for the right voice because I can't speak it that's the power of influence they have not seen a need to downgrade their systems to English because they have value that the world must subscribe to Lord make me a man of influence lift your voice and pray in one minute I covet it the Bible says to covet earnestly I desire it not for self aggrandizement not for the carnality of it for the sake of your kingdom your purposes must be represented not in just in a land it must be represented among great people lift your voice and pray in one minute Lord grant us influence as a house we receive the grace we receive the mantle we know the value of influence as far as kingdom advance is concerned and we receive it with all our hearts unashamedly and unapologetically we receive kingdom influence in business in finances in ministry in government we receive it point I'll talk about tonight and then we'll pray the sixth way that the precepts the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an open display of love an open display of the love of God love that is without prejudice love that is without tribalism love that is outside of religion any sect any movement any church any program that does not communicate the love of God to the community and the territory with which it is represented does not have a future regardless of the prayer fire regardless of the mentorship listen carefully regardless of the quality of the word the spirit of revelation that is prevalent within that territory if there is no love everybody say love no. not just love for the brethren the bible says to to love all men be good to them especially they that are of the household of faith i have watched the resentment that men of god the resentment that churches and ministries who are benefiting from a territory have towards that territory one of the requirements for being blessed and endorsed by a territory is that there must be a perception from that territory that these people love us and they seek our good are we together demonstrated in many ways but ultimately it must become a culture and a conviction I've seen many moves of God even in, in, in recent time across several territories where they have later fought the man of God. They fought the man of God, fought the church, fought everything. You know why? 
the community does not have a perception of the love not just love towards God love towards men I watch your life and I see the way you treat non-Christians I watch your life and I see the way you treat people who are not your tribe I watch your life and I see the way you treat people who did not have the privilege to go to school I watch your life and I see that although you are a prayer giant your resentment and sarcasm towards the territory God has planted you the Bible says for God so loved the world first he didn't just send the son to come and get out of the territory it was love that brought him if you want to see the purposes of God established and preserved even through this ministry we must love our environment are we together we must love the body of Christ within this environment I've, I've taught us that there may be one listen to that message is powerful there are four encounters I've taught us here that you must have in your life to be efficient number one is an encounter with the Lord Jesus the benefit of that encounter is life eternal so way number two an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit the benefit of that encounter is leadership guidance the third encounter you must have is an encounter with the Word of God the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom are we together the benefit you get from that encounter is capacity for legislature dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries and the systems of the kingdom but the last encounter that very few people have understood is an encounter with the body of Christ an encounter with the body of Christ not just God but the body of Christ if you have not had an encounter with the body of Christ you remain lopsided I trust God for when I will begin to write books I have a book that I'm going to write the title is balance it's a reorientation of the bride of Christ the book is about the bride of Christ the wife of the lamb and the dishonor that has been communicated to her the scriptural text is jealousy is the rage of a man giving you a preview into the book jealousy is the rage when you touch a responsible man's wife and claim you love the man are you not a hypocrite yes, are we together pastor Alpha, can someone insult your wife and then bow to you that's a hypocrite so when you hate his bride and claim you love him something is missing somewhere a wounded bride is still a bride an imperfect bride is still a bride we must have an encounter with the body of christ i was sharing with a dear friend he's seated here we're having a little discussion in the afternoon and i was just talking to him about the body of christ let me tell you something one of the greatest keys to be granted unusual anointings please listen to me greater than your prayer life greater than fasting is your love for God and your love for his body you will never be given the power to heal the sick if you hate the people you are going to heal are we together every spiritual gift works by love every manifestation of the power of God works by love if I hate Ejimi right now and God gives me prophecy for Ejimi the purity with which that prophecy left the throne is not the purity with which it will be delivered. That, that prophecy will rub off on my hatred and chances are that I will add to that prophecy what God did not say, which was a derivative of my personal vendetta with him. Are we together now? Love. Most of us trivialize love. We love power. If I tell everybody shout power you stand up with two hands and say power oh God shout miracles miracles shout gifts gifts shout love and we say the ladies can shout it that's the reason why many people never walk in the high places of the spirit the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the hearts the comprehension of any man that which God has in store for they that love him are we together he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not how you pray not the wheelchairs you lift up when you have love one for another 
The Bible says, how can you claim you love God that you have not seen when you hate your brother? Listen, having a different perspective is not a reason for hatred. There are many people that work, the extended workforce of the ministry includes several people. There are people watching from the projector stand outside. Some of the drivers will soon come. They are Muslims. I love them. I greet them all the time. When they give birth, our protocol department goes to greet them. We invite them for dinner. The Muslims know that I love them. I have neighbors who are Muslims. Whenever they are celebrating any occasion, I try to greet them. Sometimes we sit and see brotherly kindness. I remember when Koinonia used to do counseling sessions before we stop. Ask those who come. You see trunks of Muslim families come together with everything. Not in hiding. They come openly. Muslims recommend people and say, look, go to that man of God. And they come. Oh, I am Haji Adis. I am Alaji Adis. And I say, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. Not what are you doing here? <laughs> the world is not for Christians. The world is for anybody God allows to arrive here. Whoever. <laughs> whoever arrives here. Whoever arrives here. Deserves to be shown love. There are families. Some of your families have a mixture of Christians and Muslims. Look at the fight that happens there. The prayer warrior slash priest is the greatest troublemaker in that family because he disagrees with everything. Everything. I remember when I was in primary school, they do Muslim prayers, Christian prayers, and after they do it, everybody hugs themselves. We, truly speaking, growing up, I did not know any difference between Muslims and Christians. We celebrated Christmas together. When it was time for Salah, we looked forward to Rams arriving and all of that. I mean, people were just happy. You see people. But the resentment, especially of the church. Are we together? There are three people that come around. How are you? I'm, I'm, what's your name? I'm James. How are you? My name is Femi. How are you? My name is Abdullahi. Uh, you stand here. And we try to be able to say, look, we are the church. No, sir. You are the light of the world. 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 A city set on a hill. As far as we are represented in this land, everybody will be blessed from it. We will pray for everybody. We will strive to get as many to the saving knowledge of Jesus. But regardless, I, there are people I pray for. I pray for them with all my heart. Some of them come and they bring their chants. I'm sorry, sir. You know, the way my practice, I tell them, I said, no problem. But this is the way it is. Um, you know, when you want to see this, these charms will not help. Not, hey! You are bringing charm. My Jesus, where are you? Show up all these kinds of things that we do. No, sir. We are not going to bless the world that way. Are we together? Some of us have neighbors. Six o'clock. You are shouting. You open the door and just move. Hey, sister, Femi, come. Brother, this, come. And we're on our way going. And all the Muslim people, good morning, sir. And they are watching. Let me tell you, listen to me. We will never preserve the ordinances of the kingdom that way. But when there is love, you hear that someone is sick. Uh -uh. Annie, now you are sick. What is wrong? Is your mother around? No, she's not around. Let's go to the hospital. Ah, and the lady is watching you. You go to the hospital. You've paid the bills. Please. Amina is also my daughter. And the Hajia comes and says, ah, ah, I thought you were supposed to go to church. And say, the reason why I would have gone to church is what I am doing now. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not go to church and let somebody die. The very training I would receive in the church was to take care of such a person. And I'm here seated. The woman goes back. I love families where you see people regardless of religion, regardless of this, they love themselves. There is this resentment. And we pastors are the architects of programming members to hate any other person who is not them. The worst part of it is that it has even entered the church. It's no longer Christians versus non-Christians. Denomination. Every time you see somebody that dresses this way, you are not told to hate directly. It's through a series of messages that draw a straight line. 
hate this person if you see any lady who behaves this way hate this person if you see any brother that behaves this way hate this person if you see any young man of god preaching hate this person if you see any ministry where the power of god manifests hate them if you see any ministry where the man of god cannot even pray in tongues hate him we all combine that war and think we are being spiritual and god is watching us god is not a christian no i hope you are aware god is not a christian god is the god of all flesh god is not a christian when the when the when the angel appeared to joshua he said are you for us or against us he said you are joking i'm not for anybody i'm standing on god's side whoever i find there is the one for me you are not there you, are, you go away immediately the last supper that we talk about in heaven good news is one big table and everybody who arrives there must sit there you, you are not given the privilege of choosing your neighbor we are there one big family the bible already told us listen one of the biggest secrets of the grace of god upon my life is that i never resent any man of god i never resent any church you will never hear me open my mouth to talk against any man of god no if i mention names it is for commendation and for blessings now i have my reservations i have my convictions but it is not enough reason you see me greet and love people anywhere I have friends and great people that we vary sharply in beliefs. But I love them with all my heart. Are we together? Who taught you to love only those who agree with you? Doctrinally, religiously. Some of us innocently, our mothers have indoctrinated us. Hate this one. In this neighborhood, everybody is a witch except us. Someone prepares a nice meal. And they bring it and say, if I, if, I, if I see you touch that rice, the slap I will give you. And the neighbors are watching. Bring those people for deliverance and see who manifests. You'll be surprised that the only thing the unbeliever needs is salvation. But the so-called jumping noise maker, before they even arrive and sit, they're already shaking and shouting and flying up and down. Let's be careful. The greatest enemies of Jesus were not prostitutes. They were not children. He loved them. When he saw a woman who was caught in adultery, um, he said, woman, where are than accusers? He said, neither do I accuse you. That's Jesus for you. He met a woman by the well. And the woman was afraid as usual because everyone had treated her that way. Jesus said, you have five husbands. The one that is with you is not even your husband. I thought Jesus said, you said, Abba, one husband, two husbands. Because that's what Joshua Selma would have done. Madam, what, what is wrong with you? You have not listened to my message, Essentials for a Glorious Relationship. Thank God Jesus is not me. I'm the one who strives to become him. Are we together? But here's a loving, loving I remember one time I was counseling someone, I think he had three wives, and then he was telling me, he said, well, the other wife, the third wife is mad, and I was shocked. He just passed the statement, and then he said, come back. The what? Ah, oh God, you are mentioning this thing, and, you are, and, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. You see, when something has happened, it has happened. God manages that system to bear his will. There are no longer regrets. Doesn't mean you should do it. Yes, yes, yes. Doesn't mean you should do it. Don't go and marry anyhow. But I'm saying, when you meet people and something has already happened, if a lady has already gotten pregnant and she's giving birth to the child, you won't carry the child and put him back to her. The child has arrived. The most important thing is let's get God into that life. Yeah. That's how we salvage the situation. Listen, by the grace of God, one of my life's goal is to be the arm for wounded people to find shelter. And I say amen to that. Are we together? that when someone is wounded i will not just be an anointed man of god but a shoulder that you can lean on that when other people are moving and shouting and running their mouth like we do in the body of christ that it is you will be the shoulder for people to lean on 
Oh, I used to pray before, but something happened to my life. Hey! Something happened. What happened? Pride a bit. But you are, you are the arm. He said, it's all right. There is a system in the kingdom where mighty men can arise again. Love. Is God speaking to us? There is nobody who wants to be a member of such kind of a church. Nobody will not want to be a, a leader of such kind of a, of a pastor. Look at what this guy is doing. <laughs> can you imagine? I'm busy preaching and using him for example and he's there. Well, I love him too. God bless you, Sam. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. The workers in this ministry know that I love them. I love the leaders outspokenly. How many of you see Benga when he shines? Come Benga. When he shines, when he shines, when he shines, he said he didn't do it today, but I mean, he bought the clipper by himself and trust me, he does a good job. Better than, I mean, he shines that thing and brings it for me to impart upon it. It's called love. When you see people, anointing and love can go hand in hand. You don't have to drag your face as if you are the person. Who, no, 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 no. I love people. God bless you. You see me and it's me. You, you see me and the little children. I'm sure it's only because protocol has stopped them now. Otherwise, these children can run while I'm preaching now. They don't care. To them, your Joshua Selman is apostle to you. That, that, he's the person who plays with me when I'm ready for play. After service, they run. They don't care whether I ate or not, whether I've broken fast or not. They just jump and expect me to hold them. It's called love. There is a side of God we have failed to reveal because we have thought that revealing it is weakness. I love Muslims. You will never see tribalism in this ministry. Never. Never. The workers have been taught. They've been taught. Oh, you are Igbo. You are Yoruba. Mm -mm -mm. No, no man after the flesh. I love my people. Don't get me wrong. There are my people listening to me from just. I love all of you with all my heart. But trust me. Trust me. I love the body of Christ. I have gone to every region in this nation. They have received me with joy and honor without prejudice without sentiment i humorously used to talk with my people and i tell them i say we have many houses in this nation and then we keep listing all the houses the frequent places that we visit i'll be going to Mubi now um next month and whenever i reach there do you know how they greet me daddy or yo yo that's how they dance because that's home and it's home i love them with all my heart I told them the next time I come here, I'll look for land and buy because I think I qualify to be uh, whatever it is, the, 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 the local, the son of the soil of that place. How about Kogi? The, the, the amount of food I've eaten in Kogi qualifies me to be given something, maybe a chief tenancy title. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the body of Christ with all my heart. No resentment, no prejudice. I see a man of God, before I even know who you are and what you believe, you receive a big hug from me. How are you? You are hungry, sir. This is something to eat. Before I start finding out whether you believe whatever. You say, I believe in Jesus. I also believe in culture. I still love you, but would you want to look at it this way? Not, hey! I want, uh, blessed is the man who does not stand in the council of the weekend. I love people. There are Muslims seated here in this congregation, inside and outside, listening to me. And after service, they come and greet. I love them. That's how many of them have become born again. But whether or not they become born again, hating them. I love everybody. My neighbors, they are little children. When I see them, I, they just jump and come and hug me and I lift all of them. I don't care whether you are a Christian or this, you are a Habalist, whether there's a chap on you, that's not the issue. That's why God allowed me immune myself. I lift them and I'm happy and bless them. Change your outlook about the world. My world is a beautiful world. My world is not a world in crisis. Having enemies, church versus uh -uh. No. My world is a beautiful world. I love people. I don't resent people. I don't pride myself at the pain of people. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your children. 
Establishing koinonia everywhere. Kingdom advancement is koinonia establishing Christ everywhere. Are we together? Yes. The mandate is extended by many of you here and many ministries that will come out of here. That's true kingdom advance. Not an advancement of one person's agenda and ideology, but an advancement of his kingdom. And it's a privilege to contribute the quota that your ministry or whatever platform can bring in kingdom advance. I love the body I honor the husband and I honor his wife I honor the husband Christ I honor his wife the ecclesia I honor the bride of Christ I will never resent the bride of Christ though wounded she still deserves my honor though in ignorance in many areas she still deserves my honor are we together I meet a man of God somewhere. I greet him whether I know you or not. Oh, you're a pastor. God bless you. Where? What are you doing? Oh, I'm a pastor with this and that and that and that. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. How are you? Oh, I'm a pastor with deeper life. Ah, how is our father, Papa Kumui? Oh, you know Papa Kumui. I love him with all my heart. Oh, I'm a member of MFM. Really? How is our father, Daniel Lukoya? Ah, he's this. I mean, you love him. Really? Are you a member of MFM? No, not exactly, but these are fathers. They bless us. A child receives from anywhere his father is. That's the body of Christ. Are we together? How are you? Oh, you are a winner. Yes, God bless you. Oh, I was blessed by Papa Oyedepo's message. I was so blessed. Are we together? Every, it doesn't matter what fellowship I can preach there. It doesn't matter what ministry. I can preach. I remember when the Anglican communion invited me. They forgot that I was a seminarian. Ah. I saw, I think it was the vicar. He was so happy when I was reciting the Apostles' Creed. And I was talking and you know, ah, he was so impressed. And after the meeting, they loved me with all his heart and I greeted him, appreciated him. I love people with all my heart. You don't pray in tongues, no problem, I love you. You are limited by your understanding. I pray that you improve, but no problem. I love you. Are we together? That's what Jesus taught us. Now listen to me. I was sharing again with my friend this afternoon. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody has the authorization to correct the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Correcting the body is an office. The same way, if, come, Emeka is writing his last exam in a few weeks and you'll be a full doctor. Huh? It's already, a, it's just to, for them, to all of them, see our, our doctor people there. I mean, we have so many doctors, children sick, while prayer is going, injection is coming here, attacking from every angle. I tell you, divine health is going to be here for a very long time. It has come here to stay. Praise God. Now watch this. If I am sick, 
will I allow any roadside these guys that sell pharmacies on uh, they sell drugs on, on one box on their head that they can mix everything will I allow that person to treat me I go to an authorized person what authorized him there is an association when he writes his final exam he's going to be officially authorized to practice medicine is that true yes correcting do you think God will create a body and not allocate the doctors that take care of it are we together the same way you have lecturers that teach the mind of that body you have doctors coming to correct the body is an office one of the first requirements to be qualified to collect to correct the body is that you must love the body without reservation the whole body must be loved without reservation to end the right to correct her help that person under the anointing the moment listen 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 let me have your attention here the moment you do not love the body you cannot effectively correct the body if this guy is a pastor come Mike and Mike is a pastor XYZ Ministries International ABC Ministries International and I come I'm a pastor I don't like what Mike is doing I already have a bias I can never correct it in truth are we together but I can stand here loving the body and when I say Mike I think um, you are supposed to put your hand this way not this way I do it in love are we together the context of my communication shows that I love Mike genuinely and I seek with all my heart to see him rise hallelujah I rebuke many of you here sometimes I come to preach and the series can be fire you know there are series that I hammer as soon as they finish preaching your body is just shaking and you can't wait for the grace so that you quietly go no matter how hard I am on you you discern my heart and know that there's love there are men of God you shout at members like that next Sunday you have empty pews but when they know that you love them I rebuke people I rebuke the workers I rebuke worship team worship team I love you people with all my heart but there are times that they deserve rebuke and what does a good leader do you rebuke them to the gravity that will create the effect but they know I love them I rebuke all kinds of people protocol everywhere. so you don't come and just begin to lambast the body of Christ tear down every ministry tear down every man of God carry the baby and the bad water and the bad water mix everything together and throw them no if my leg is wounded don't insult my head my head is still good appreciate the fact that I bab well it's just that there's wound on my leg and then bring bandage and treat it don't keep pointing and say ah you mean this big injury is on your leg how can such a good head have bad leg? You are not solving the problem. Bring a bandage. I wrote a song years ago. The bandage is larger than the wound. Powerful song. One day I will, I will play this keyboard by myself and sing it. Are we together now? Bandage the wound. And say, Father, thank you for the privilege. Your head is good. But this is where the problem is. And I come as a member of the body too and I remedy you and two weeks later the wound is healed and he's standing the church is stronger the body is stronger Christ is exalted it's only in the church that we destroy our wounded soldiers a man of God serves a ministry for many years and an issue comes around his life and the people he has served for many years turn against him as if he became a devil in one month no sir no sir I manage a lot of cases between men of God and sometimes I see the bleeding that comes from them they serve people with all their heart and maybe sometimes something happened around their life that you know destroyed their ministry or whatever it is and you see the resentment my prayer for you is that you become the arm that can wipe the tears of people that every time people are crying they say I know that Pastor Alpha is a prayer warrior. He's a revelation giant, but he's also a loving hand. What a good testimony. 
Jesus said, let the little children come. The children were running to Jesus. And all of a sudden, said, guy, guy, leave me alone. He, he's, he's, he has finished fasting. Allow him. And Jesus said, yeah, who taught you this? Let the little children come to me. And do not despise them. For for such is the kingdom. I have come to seek and save the lost. I have come as a man of God. When I, when I travel and go to regions many times pastors come from other cities to come you know just in honor of the meeting and i look at their faces i see some already intimidated i see some standing and i am very quick to honor all of them i come to them and i say men of god i love you i honor you i have not come to outshine you i know you have listened to my messages don't be intimidated i am here to lift up your hand i am here you are already doing something great I don't go to a city and destroy what the people are doing there. I go to a city and I tell them, look, you are doing something great. And I'm here to lift up your hands. So that Jesus will be seen. You don't come and open a shop near another believer. And as soon as you open a shop near that believer, you just sit down. Go and bring oil. Go and bring water. Go and bring this and pour it and say, you will see. You will know that the God of my of apostle joshua Sam, and you know there's fire in this coin on you wait and see your shop and then the person's shop is going down and you are laughing say see i told you this anointing works in this ministry you are an immature believer an accident happens 10 members eight die and the only two members that survive are the members of your church and then they come and say everybody died except us Remember that prophecy that Papa gave us and, and, uh, and, 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 and an immature man of God is happy. The death of eight believers is a setback to kingdom advance. We must have a corporate heart. Are we together now? I was asking, I was asking him uh, about the, the flood in Benway State and what is going on because my heart, I've just been thinking about the people there and I was telling him, I said, look, Benway has tried for years to bring me by God's grace, I, would, I should try to visit that land next year. And we're just talking. And those of you listening from Benway, I love you. Uh, it's not my, my intention not to have come. And trust me, next year, in the name of Jesus Christ, next year, Benway should be part of the itinerary. Let's, let's go there and contribute to the great things that they are doing there. Whenever you approach ministry as a contribution, in addition to what God is already doing, you become loved you become valued and every man of God within that territory loves you but when you go to a territory and push everybody away as though you are doing nonsense you are not even praying in tongues and you are a pastor you are not even this and that you are not collecting offering in your church eh? you, are not... you approach the pulpit with a heart of love you bless people seated in this place are mighty men and women of God they come quietly to sit down while the meeting is happening. After service, there are many people who have traveled from many regions. I don't stand Joshua Selman. This is him. In case you have heard about him, this is Apostle Joshua Selman. Yes, bring your demons, bring your sickness. No, 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 no. It's a privilege of his grace. I will never take for granted. I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace shines on me. It's your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. pastors of fellowships and groups learn it never make your fellowship a place that divides the body are we together call to order people whose lives have a track record of the no 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 especially some of us who are younger coming up in ministry we have hardly seen anything and we are already sustaining this bossy attitude no sir no sir I've shared about my love and honor for CGC. The, the leadership of CGC, I say it in the open. The CGC represents the most humble 
or set of ministers I have seen in all my life till date. Truly speaking, truly speaking, I have never, never seen men of God so anointed together with their wives. The mama of CGC is such a humble woman. Mommy will see me like this and left for her. A woman that is old enough to be my mother, how many times? Mommy will want to kneel down. I know what some of you will do. You will stand and say, well, mommy, I, I, let me tell you how it is. You won't look for it, but if it comes, you will enjoy it. You are still a criminal. It's, listen, it's like buying alcohol or you are given. A drunkard is one who drinks alcohol, not ones who drink by buying with his money. Whether you are given as a gift, it is the act of drinking alcohol that makes you a drunkard. A wise person. Just because they acknowledge you and they come, ah, apostle sir, and the woman, eh, my mother, wanting to kneel down for me, and then I stupidly stand there and I, no, I will join her and kneel down. She kneels down and will lie down and roll. I say, mommy, let's, let's roll on the floor there. Some of us are already receiving that. You, your appetite for outshining is almost a cancer. You don't search for it for yourself. But when it comes, you don't mind. Where is the apostle? Where is he? That guy? That's it? Yes, apostle. Joshua Selman. And in case you doubt that I'm anointed, give me five minutes. Let me handle the mic. That's not a person that will last. If it means God taking the ministry from me to retain the humility he has given me, it's a worthy bargain. I will give up koinonia a thousand times to maintain my work with God and to maintain the life. Humility has blessed me more than financial intelligence. It has given me access to the hearts of people. There is nothing as beautiful as someone highly anointed and truly humble not fake humility that is, is just no 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 humility that is based on revelation i love the body of christ i love the church of the lord jesus in zaria every time i pass around and i see different prayer groups prayer cells different people i see a lot of you know our some of them are brethren here some of them have crusades in different lands we just i think there was a crusade conducted recently in gombe you know i am excited seeing the people that god has granted grace to raise doing a lot of things i'm not pushing them and say who oh, no it should be only me only me no only you is this is that one is is just culture we bring our cultural limitations mix it with the anointing and make it look like it's the holy spirit that is responsible for all that outcome no sir let's separate between the limitations that came from our personal sense of poor esteem i love it when i see god lift people i love it when i see god use people during the school of ministry i was uh, the, their practicum i was seated outside and i was almost shedding tears I was watching as great men and women powerful people dispensing truth i sat down the reason why i left this place and i sat down outside was i didn't want them to be conscious of the fact that i'm there and then be conscious of not i i wanted them to just have their way and minister and what a powerful meeting it was for me it's a pride for many men of god is an intimidation no 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 let's let's clamp these people down very soon before they outshine <laughs> No. honor is a mantle if it's on you it's on you shines on me shines on me i'm everything with you shines on me shines on me it's your grace shines on me sent me a text a few weeks ago i think arm robbers entered and i think it's a small church somewhere i don't know if it's in abuja or nasarawa state and he sent me a text he said man of god i don't know you 
but armed robbers just entered they stole some of their gadgets you know i'm sure maybe the church was not secured and all of that i didn't have to ask who are you what what church do you belong to what do you believe do you listen to my message or not that's that was none of my business sir really ah i called him how are you sir let me pray for you i hope they didn't hurt anybody where is the church i pray for you with all my heart in the name of jesus please send me your account number whatever little i can send if it cannot be enough to buy a speaker at least you can buy a recharge card and make calls cheer up don't worry father strengthen this brother in the faith the devil has come to discourage him but my brother i encourage you stand strong oh apostle you have been a mentor to me that's not the issue i'm praying for you now the loss of one is the loss of the body the gain of one is the gain of the body lift your voice as you are seated and cry for the grace a baptism of love for the body i'm not doubting your love for god but your love for the body i show you why you are not seeing miracles in your life i show you why there are certain levels of investments that you may not see i show you why god may not be able to trust you with blessings for the body lord i love your body ah i love your body i love every church i love every denomination i love every man of god there may be difference in belief systems there may be difference in values our levels of alignment may differ our levels of spiritual results may differ but i love what you are doing in nigeria the church in nigeria is not dead the church in nigeria is not weak she can't be better but christ is in the midst of her church the perfecter of the bride 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 inside outside make sure you are praying the perfecter of the bride hallelujah we are soon going to stand up but i'm going to give you one more prayer point i'd like you to pray and say lord the spirit of sarcasm and resentment take it out of me i didn't even know when it entered me i laugh at men of god i laugh at business people i laugh at other tribes anyone who is not yoruba i laugh at them and resent them anyone who is not evil i laugh at them and resent them anyone who is not a northerner anyone who is not a christian any muslim i see i hate it no sir no sir no sir jesus taught us to love jesus taught us to love it's one way we allow the purposes of god to be preserved that the church within a territory is known for love not hate not hate hallelujah listen we are going to pray brothers and sisters look at me if it is authentic power you want if it is grace and anointing you want more than fasting and more than prayer you must love his body you cannot love a husband and hate his wife you are a hypocrite i cannot love a jimmy and hate hope i cannot love pastor alpha and hate and it doesn't work that way when you love a man you love his wife if you love christ the head of the church then you must love his bride yes still getting perfected yes with many mistakes in the midst of her yes with many scandals in the midst of her yes with many people blindly refusing dimensions of god but you must love people i love every man of god i love every pastor i love every leader in zaria across this nation i love them i watch television and i see different preachers across different channels manifesting what they know and understand by the, the kingdom in many ways and i see a lot of things i have my reservation but i love them in spite i love all of them with all my heart the same way many people love me in spite of my own imperfections in spite of my own limitations they overlook the excellence level of our messages some messages are not very clear they overlook it and focus on what god is doing that is the same way you must sow that same seed of love you can't be resentful over everybody are we together yes the lady did not cover her hair okay it's all right reserve your reservation about your concept there 
but it's not enough reason to hate oh the lady covered her hair ah i don't believe in covering of hair no problem but it's not enough reason to go around hating people no sir we must love the body when we do this as a territory you will see revival break out in zaria and from zaria across every part one worship minister will finish worshiping and hug the other one and give him the mic with joy not give him the mic like you have come to stop me from shining no the body think kingdom not koinonia think kingdom think body not joshua selman thank god for the honor thank god for the loyalty based on administration but if you want to be effective in the kingdom you must think beyond me you must think beyond koinonia you must think kingdom and the purposes of god every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. Tonight in this place, there are people who are afflicted by all kinds of diseases. Some of you have had medical reports. Some of you have spent money in the hospital and it has become clear. Some of you were even recommended by doctors. We thank God for the caliber of doctors we're having now. They are spiritual people. Once they try once, twice, it's them who will advise you and say, we will not stop you. But Mr. Man, find a man of God quick. Are we together now? There are people here sick with all kinds of oppression. Benihim calls sickness death, limited death. He calls sickness limited death. That means if you are sick, it's like a part of you has already died. And it's true. There are people here with all kinds of delays in need of major breakthroughs. Not everyone here is sick. But there are people in need of all kinds of breakthroughs there are people here and many people do not know that the causes of their challenges are oppressions demonic oppressions demonic oppressions activities of spiritual forces in the lives of people programming repeated cycles of tragedy programming repeated cycles of tragedy there are people tonight in need of supernatural solutions solutions that only God can give job issues promotion issues health issues all kinds of issues it's not called a healing service it's called a miracle service a miracle service is an atmosphere where the multifaceted possibilities of God are allowed unrestrained. It's like a feast. If you are sick, then there is a dimension of him that can address that. If you are not sick but oppressed of the devil, there is a dimension of him. Now, it's important for us to understand how God answers prayers. Because many of us have been praying. We have prayed here over our issues. There are many of us, what you need tonight is prayers and wisdom. That is the answer that you need. Wisdom. You may not be sick, but a lot of your decisions may not be accurate. And you will need a supply of wisdom or higher wisdom. Number two, there are people tonight the miracle you need is grace for obedience grace for obedience grace for obedience that spiritual inertia that reluctance to rise up responding to your conviction is what has kept many of us where we are there are people tonight your prayers will be answered to deliverance there is no discussion you don't need counseling you need those spirits out of your life and the legal basis 
not just the spirits out of your life but the legal authorization that keeps them in your life keeps them in your family there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is healing for your body healing for your soul do you know years ago I didn't pay so much attention to what people call emotional healing I felt it was very feminine and for lazy people most I, I felt any serious person needed physical healing or spiritual healing if you needed emotional healing you needed orientation too but it's not true um, emotional healing can be more painful than physical healing are we together the Bible says a broken spirit can dry the bones where the life of a man is carved out there are people in need of all kinds of healing there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is repentance and forgiveness that's how God will answer you you need to forgive and you also need to repent that's your miracle service tonight there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is prophecy you need a prophetic word you need a direct prophetic word that addresses your issues no long story no discussion alongside the creative power that flows through prophecy pay attention there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is an impartation of favor it's very clear that if favor came into your life you would not be where you are favor there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is a direct impartation greater fire greater unction greater activation of the gifts of the spirit greater activation of of a higher capacity for spiritual things there are people tonight your own miracle service is an introduction of the mercy of God over your life and situation everybody here will receive tonight through one or more of these means a supply of wisdom grace for obedience deliverance from spirits healing repentance forgiveness prophecy favor impartation your assignment is to be sensitive to when your word comes you see that like the lady who was already shouting while the meeting started something is already happening to her you see god is already doing his business with her for someone in the overflow you may be in maybe overflow three overflow three the fence is covered and they almost cannot see me directly except through the screen doesn't matter the only thing you benefit standing close to a man of god is convenience in the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter whether you are here whether you are outside whether you are online whether you are in any nation doesn't matter the time zone the most important thing is when your faith can connect to the anointing then a supply of the power of god comes your direction tonight brothers and sisters i present to you a god who is almighty tonight i present to you a king that can heal that can change situations the bible says where the word of a king is there is power i present to you one who is not limited by our situations i present to you one who is loving enough to respond to you i present to you one who loves you enough to change your life i present to you one who can give you value for your time spent in his presence god is not a herbalist God is not a prophet. He walked on the earth and manifested those things. But he's God Almighty. I want your heart to be open tonight. Especially if you are here for the first time. You may have come, gone through all the rigors of the inconvenience to position yourself somewhere. You must open up your heart to receive. We have prayed, we've partnered with God. 
and God is ready to deliver that which is your portion in full in full in full not part of it remember the negotiation that pharaoh wanted he wanted to broker a negotiation and said let your wives go leave your kids behind and and moses said no way that's not what god told me everything must go plus animals so you're going to insist tonight that even if it's your hair falling god must come in and touch it don't say it does not matter why believe god in one area and not believe in another regardless of the area it is still the power of god that will solve it don't trust God to heal your body and then not change your financial situation. No. Don't trust God to step in and deliver you from oppression and then you go back sick again. Do you believe tonight that the Lord is going to step in and change your life? Truly speaking, let me tell you this. God has granted me the privilege to walk in dimensions of his anointing. It still marvels me after many years of working in the anointing how the anointing works. It's still a marvel to me at how when the power of God truly locates someone how his life changes overnight. Overnight. Except it's not the power of God that meets you. You won't know it will change. All of a sudden you will see doors open. My elder sister shared with me a testimony today. She probably might be following online. Something that God did in her life. And I'm not a very emotional person, but I was almost fighting tears. I says, God already, 1st of October, a strange... These are, the, these, are the, these are the kinds of miracles. Listen, these are the kinds of miracles that when you hear, if only one of it happens per year, you are happy major miracles that can shift your life i said lord thank you because my family members are also partaking because they have to believe too that they are my family members does not mean they will believe automatically no the brothers of jesus kept watching him and he said don't be watching no release your faith some of you here are sitting you have cried in the secret you have cried in the open let this be your last cry Are we together? Only God knows the pain that some of you are seated here with. The level of pain you are, you are seated. That, see, this is why we fast and pray and prepare. Because we will be wicked to allow people to come. Some of you started your journey since last week. You have come to come, spend time, spend resources. No, this is not a cinema hall. This is not a place of games. Some of you have carried sick people. Some of you have carried sick bodies. There is a God that can reward. There is a God that can reward. Please hear me. I may not claim I know everything about God, but I know this God enough to know He's mighty. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Listen, listen. Let me teach you something about the anointing. The anointing introduces possibilities in your life. These are things that were not there. If it's not there, you can't say it's there. It's a lie. Tonight, don't tell lies. There are things that are not in your life but should be there. The agency that will bring it is the anointing. There is favor that should be in your life but it's not in your life. If it's not there, everybody will know. When it comes, we will also know. There were things that were not in my life years ago. When it came, I knew to the degree that brought it. Listen, tonight is the ministry of the spirit. I told you it's the anointing that is responsible for the result. It is the, the it is a how shall these things be? What is the dynamics? He said the power of the highest. That's how it happens. 
it has never changed it is always an encounter with the anointing your the job of your faith is to connect you to the anointing it is never faith that moves god no your faith connects you to the power of god tonight i came with an anointing there is enough grace there is enough anointing i tell you this there is enough anointing if you will believe there is enough anointing your situation is not the first your situation is the is not the first your family situation is not the greatest there is nothing new under the sun god's ability is god's ability is working in me it's working in me it's god's ability god's ability It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. solution to your problem is in the anointing seek an encounter with it when the anointing comes to you that's the answer that's the answer listen listen when the anointing comes your direction that's your answer that's God answering your prayer I'm not talking about falling down I'm talking about an encounter the answer is in the anointing your faith only connects you to the anointing life can change in a moment your life can change in a moment God is a prayer answering God he answers prayers by releasing his power he sends his power through his word in the direction where it is needed and received needed and received
Please lift your hands. The prayer answering God. The prayer answering God. There is a God that answers prayers. Koinonia, he answers prayers with his power. He answers prayers with the anointing. The anointing is answered prayer the anointing is answered prayer the anointing kato soto kata is answered prayers barakoto shote ketele kata the anointing is answered prayer it is by the anointing there is no other way it is by the anointing Abu Wali please lift your hands the Lord is going to do a very quick walk tonight I'm hearing people crying in the spirit and the Holy Ghost is telling me these are those who have been delayed delayed by the power of darkness I'm about to release the anointing upon people experiencing delay. Bring them out. I stretch my hands. Delay. You come on that judgment. You come on that judgment. Delay. Delay. I stretch my hands. All the overflows online. Anyone here. Any family. Under the spirit of delay. Bring them out. Sakoto Shabariata. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. The fire of God breaking the chains of delay, 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 breaking the chains of delay. Bring them out. Wani Kamar the Kai Papu. Delay over, over forever. There is an anointing. I told you the anointing is the answer to the prayers. There is an anointing. I'm seeing in this main bowl 16 people. I'm seeing a number 16. Where are they? I stretch my hands. That sword of the spirit breaking delay. There are families with a covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. Breaking now. Breaking now. Breaking now. The covenant of delay. Shakatatata. Reketoko Sotoba. The covenant of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow three, please look at me on the screen. You don't need to bring them here. It's too long a distance. Those inside that building, just look at me on the screen. Because I'm seeing angels moving at overflow three. And I want to pray for you overflow three right now in the name of jesus right where you are in the name of jesus i'm seeing a number 24 24 people right at overflow three the lord is breaking delay breaking delay from them breaking delay right now breaking delay hallelujah there are still people Listen, I want you to believe in what God is doing. I want you to have a testimony. 
without an encounter with his power it will just be a religious service i promise you and you will go back it is the power of god the power of god is what draws the line hallelujah delay delay god is not yet done where is that family oh lord that nobody has moved forward i'm seeing delay don't worry god is coming in the anointing of the spirit is looking for a family there is a family there is a family there is a family they are here there is a family jesus Shokos Ketosia help this woman Sheketos Keleketa Yata Tosikata. There is a family. This is not just an individual thing. There is a family. The power of God is searching for a family that the devil has kept, kept, kept so that they will not rise. Hallelujah. We are going to be fast tonight. There are many things to do. I want you to be sensitive. The Lord is showing me a vision now. And I'm seeing a grave. I'm seeing something that looks like a black leather inside that grave and i'm seeing an angel of the lord pull it out and the lord is saying this was done against a family lord where is that family right now i stretch my hands whoever programmed the earth to fight any family Tonight is a night of resurrection. So get those karyatata. Parodos soto kosh. Eleketo kesete kotosh. Priyakatas kotaryata toshia. Eketos koliadada. I decree and declare. Let it come out now. Let it come out. The breakthrough of that family. The healing of that family. The miracle of that family. I release it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm standing here and I'm looking at this stage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting seven stones. And the Lord is saying these are tight destinies. This is the whole destiny of a family. Seven of them. But may the sword of the God I serve. Shakotos kata. Shakras katatosya. Raketo toto tete te ele katos keta proskia rakata batos soteriata in the name of Jesus any family tied down by witchcraft any family tied down by ordinances I decree and declare by the blood of Jesus liberty tonight liberty tonight hallelujah i'm seeing a family and there are four ladies and all the four ladies have a growth either a breast lump or something in their body four ladies all of them have it in the name of jesus christ wherever this family is regardless of what what overflow i stretch my hands now in the name of jesus christ that family does not need healing. That family needs deliverance. I command deliverance right now. Shakatos kata. Lekata koto soto priyata. I command deliverance for that family now. I command deliverance now. When I was praying, I saw at least eight women that were barren no child doesn't matter what years some of them connected to families 
and the Lord told me he was going to open the wombs of every single one of them every single one of them every single one of them please lift your hands I want to pray now I believe in deliverance I really do this mama there's serious witchcraft in your family as I'm praying for you now I'm seeing a rope a rope I'm seeing a rope and the Lord is saying that I should set this mama free I'm just being fast because I want us to conserve time hallelujah listen do you know why we do not minister deliverance just as a religious thing no it is a way of separating people and the influences that tie them down that's what I want to do now I want to pray listen many of you inside many of you outside are here now because of spirits you may not believe it you may not agree but it's true they are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through but I want to pray for you now your own is to believe just do what I'm asking you to do we have already prayed if those spirits do not clear out of your life there is no breakthrough you, you would have come to waste your time let me tell you the truth it is when those forces leave your life families here spirits have sat on the destinies of families do your worst go to school and come back and meet us get a job and see come back and meet us marry and come back and meet us are we together it's time for them to go lift your hands everyone I want to pray for you now I'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you are we together now I'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself you can do well to help please you can help at least manage the ushers will come for it because this prayer I'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people I see a lot of wild spirits wicked ancient spirits all shapes and all sizes they must go now just one instruction I just want you to shout when I ask you the name of Jesus once and at the top of your voice now listen don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you it doesn't mean you are possessed no that's a different thing altogether some of you as you are here you are representing your family nothing may be wrong with you as a person but because of your family are you ready now lift your hands father in the name of Jesus you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of Jesus at the sound of my voice may your voice be in my voice may your grace be in my voice I send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the Holy Ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational familiar spirits 
I command you now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm seeing a number of ladies. There are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams. In the name of Jesus, where are those ladies? Fire is looking for them now. Shakoto Soto Tetiata. Ekelatos Kopriata. I separate you from those spirits. I separate you from those covenants. I separate you from those ordinances. Any man, any woman, any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of jesus i command by the spirit a severance between you and them hallelujah sir this baba can i talk to you sir please come god is about to change your story forever i don't know you sir but i want to pray for you stand up please stand up sir i'm looking at you in a vision and i'm seeing you are not alone you came with some people the, your children one one child your son eh? only you no there's a son is here. where is he come come and stand daddy i want to pray for you that this life of hardship god one please stand up please stand up you don't have to kneel down sir this is your dad I want to pray for you. You came believing. Eh? August, is it Augustus? I'm hearing the name Augustus. Augustus. Is it Augustus? Is it Augustus, Augustine, or something? Augustus. Please, if that's your name, let me just talk to you quickly. I want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much. We want to pray for the sick. I want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that my sister come this lady this one not you you are not a woman my brother this come lift your hands shout over forever in the name of Jesus Christ for you and your family it's over in the name of Jesus Christ sir if you have never believed a man of God in your life what is about to happen to you there is a reason why I ask you to come because the Lord showed me that there was a son and I want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind. You believe it, sir? Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, it's over right now. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare that it's over. In the name of Jesus, over forever. Sir, hold my hands. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and prosper by the anointing of the spirit of God go and prosper Gabriel who is Gabriel Gabriel I'm hearing the name Gabriel please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time Gabriel Gabriel is he Gabriel what's your name huh Augustine come you are Gabriel why is he here Augustine I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. My sister. Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. 
two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel too. You too. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's first October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there, right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is, I should tell you, he's taking something away from your stomach. That's what is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that thing to go now. My brother, there is oppression. There's a spirit that you need to be delivered from. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Out now of his life and his family. Help two of them. God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but it doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Ye two. Ye two. What is ye two? I'm seeing Y E. Is it Y E T U or ye two or ye two? Something like that. Ye two. Something that has to do with ye two. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Ye two. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Ye two. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Yetu? You can guess Gabriel, you can guess Mary. But Yetu, I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a cotton. And leave her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is of the devil. And I release your wife right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of jesus your miracle has come your miracle has come you love jesus my friend look at me you love jesus i want to pray for you ah in the name of jesus why is she here your dad there is a copper that i want to pray for there is a copper something is coming on you my dear Let me pray for you. Don't worry. If, if, I, if all I do, I, I just lay my hands on you. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Please, why are you here? You are Gabriel? Gabriel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for this guy. God is giving you favor. Great favor. Great favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's bad luck in your life and your family. But it's going now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's going. That's why you're here. Gabriel. Aleku is there. This is like an idol. Aleku or Aleku. Eh? Aleku. Aleku. Who is that? Eh? Hold on. Where are you from? Aleku. This is something that has to do with a tree. Is there something like that? Is a what? Why are they coming out? What is why are you? They named somebody after the idol, and the Lord is saying, who, who is the person? Whose name? This is it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State. But the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying this is like somebody's name. Ale, Ale Kuos, Ale something like that. Ale Ku or so. Who is this? Huh? What's that?
Alleluia. Praise God. Alleluia. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, they are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. Is that true? They called that name three times. One, two, three. That idol. Is that true? Yes. Sir. From that day when you woke up, your life was never the same again. Is that true? Give her the mic now. Let her talk. Yes. Sir. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Hold my hands. If you are from Benway here, hold my hands. Anything, any programming that has been done with any God, you will be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata. Out of their lives now. Out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a medical university. I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and nobody. There's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, you have, do you know what they call the cause of hardship? You are not a lazy man, but there is hardship in your life. And the Lord is asking me to help you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for this, our daddy. Let there be a miracle right now in his life. I command this yoke of hardship to go. Let it go forever. In the name of Jesus. Let it go forever. Jumai. 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 Is that your name? Uh, well, I'll pray for you, but this is not the person I'm seeing. Jumai. I'll pray for you. Your family is oppressed. There is a spirit that must go now. Bring her. I've not even started praying. Bring her. There is a, a, a wicked spirit that I see in this family. A very wicked spirit that I see in this family. This is something that is older than, older than old. This is hundreds of years old. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I use you as a point of contact. I command that spirit, you must go now. Hallelujah. Please, just allow me. This is, Juma, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, right now in the name of jesus there is disfavor in your life anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you i hold your hands and i release you right now in jesus name i want to pray in a hurry there is a family all the men it doesn't matter whether you are hard working whether you go to school or not but the lord is asking me to pray for that family right now lord where are they I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside, outside, under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now I release the power of God to that family right now 
I speak to the men in that family arise now arise now arise now arise now arise now help that woman arise now arise now the men in that family arise now arise now in the name of Jesus There's somebody here you lost your job in the month of March March you lost your job please where is that person you were working but in the month of March I want us to hurry up I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time the month of March I don't know if you are except if he's a person his family overflow tree then they can just locate him you lost your job there's something you lost your job in the month of March where is that person Please quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was a banker. I was a banker. You were a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened? Yes, sir. And they dismissed you? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you will get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where have you been praying for? Ah, sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. bank same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me I know many of you may not why is he here sir come well stand up sir you were outside yes, overflow three overflow three yes you sir. lost your job where were you working i'm working in hospital which hospital? an accountant which hospital Tukutuku medical centers so that you see we don't ask this question because we are prying into your privacy. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing, because there are still people with all these things they see, they still believe that maybe someone is playing games. At least this one is not, you are watching it now. Which hospital, sir? Tukutuku Medical Center, Zaria. At uh, Tukutuku. Okay, where are you working now? I'm just, I'm managing with one private school. What do you want God to do for you? Just get back the job back to that place no 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 another job sir another job yes. do you believe if i pray for you god will give you a job i believe that. do you know why i'm prophesying to you in the open so that you will testify in the open too what's your name sir i'm paul paul yes sir god will give you a job eh? amen the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord listen so when it has to do things there, we don't legislate. We make petitions. But the act has he given to the sons of men. I give you a job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. He will go and return with it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, how many of us are trusting God for healing miracles? Or came with loved ones that are really sick? Okay, we have a lot to do. So what will happen is, we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick. And then after that, I'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer. Will that be okay? Now, but while we are doing that, please, no laziness. There will be prayer points. Are we together? There will be prayer points. Once the prayer point comes, pray. Because in that prayer point, you will receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. But don't sit down yet. I'm, I'm not walking around, but I just want to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord directing me to someone. There is, there is something that we must settle here. 
I'm seeing an anointing going around this place. I'm seeing an anointing going around this area. There is oppression over someone's destiny. That's the lady in the name of Jesus. I command that devil to go now. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? Kina de chuo, chuo kafa. To mama mu fara do akije ki jirani agabako. Zam miki adu. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let it be over now. That oppression. Let it be over by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming to. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. In the name of Jesus. I saw light moving across here. And God wants to visit a family right now. Three of them. One, two, three. Where are they? Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the visitation come now. No hiding. The Lord must touch them. That's why you came. The Lord must touch you. Casting crowds. Lifting hands. Bowing hearts. That's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds. Out. Lifting hands. Bowing hearts. That's all we come to do. In your name. We will rise, Adonai, you reign on high, in your name, in your name, we will rise, Adonai, Adonai, you reign on high. Look at me, that girl, look at me, shout Jesus. Something is tying you. Let it lose you now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it be over now. Hallelujah. Now please, for those of you coming here for the first time, we take our time. We, you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time. Our time is very limited. Praise the Lord. Now this is what we are going to do. Um, while I give you the prayer request, please listen carefully. Those, please listen carefully. I want to pray particularly particularly no matter what overflow you are in if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb don't come now but when it's time to come I want you to come I want to pray for you by myself but any other issue those inside I want you to come stand here and then part of overflow two maybe half of overflow two can join them now overflow one please you go to your projector stand overflow two and those spilling over at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three if god grants grace and there's time i'll just run and come and visit you briefly just to let you know we're together overflow three move to your projector stand hallelujah and we're going to pray very quickly please if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you don't worry we have to pray quickly so that i'll focus and do other things i want everybody to receive will that be fine but those who are trusting god for fruit of the womb whether you're in overflow one two three wherever i like you to please come those online doesn't matter any nation those following us online doesn't matter your nation you're trusting god for a miracle i want you to connect right now by faith hallelujah so we're going to do three things at the same time number one you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers number two you're going to be praying the prayers that i'll give you while preparing our faith and then number three will come out is that all right praise the lord so let's do that very quickly very quickly please you're trusting god or you came with a sick person now is your time to come out please quickly 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 jesus we bless you I don't know. You reign no on casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts. It's what we've come to. 
the doom Casting rods We are lifting hands Bowing hearts To what we've come to do It's in your name In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people. Our uh, uh, miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, we'll coordinate. We'll make it very fast. Ushers, please be collecting the prayer requests. If your loved ones are here to send their own, send them a text quickly. And she can join the queue. Just keep them somewhere. I'm going to lay my hands on them. Praise the Lord. How many overflows do we have? There's an extra overflow I see by the road. It has spilled over. Maybe overflow four. You can, uh, let's see. We have to be fast. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, Pastor Jimmy will be at the overflow outside here. Pastor Alpha, you'll be at the overflow here. Benga, you would go to overflow three. Is there someone outside here? Who is outside here? Pastor Alpha is outside. Um, promise. Promise you will be here with Pastor Alpha. And then um, Pastor Femi, you'll be with um, you'll be with Benga right there at the overflow. Inside here, I don't know how many people are left. And by God's grace, God will grant us grace. And we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister. Okay, Kenny. Kenny, join join um, a Jimmy. You join a Jimmy there. I think that's that's all right so far. Let's let's just trust God for grace. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus Christ that for everyone we are praying for, it doesn't matter who lays hands on them, let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be miracles. The devil is a liar. Let there be miracles in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your stomach, my dear. I want to remove something from your body now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit, that devilish spirit. Father, let there be miracles in Jesus' name. Please, let's go very quickly. We we'll need more hands. I don't know if we we'll still have people. I know they may. Aaron, what if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in Overflow 3 with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please worship team you're going to give us we're going to pray one prayer first i'd like you to decree and declare and say father i prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray father we give you all the praise do i not leave now how to do Come and change my story Give me a testimony Do what only you know How to do Can I hear you say Do what only you know Do what only you know How to do Can you lift up a voice and say Do what only you know Do what only you know How to do Somebody say, do what only you know how to 
You 
ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty in this place. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here. I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. There are things written here that except the writer if you read it you won't even believe that it can happen but i pray the god who has the all-seeing eye that can see every request a representation of every man's pain here i call on that god answer by fire answer by fire father there are issues here that are impossible with men. Some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I prophesy, let there be strange miracles. Strange miracles now. For all those connecting from whatever nation, in the name of jesus we agree with you here the same fire that is on this altar through the internet to your various localities you receive the same testimony in the name of jesus every human agent that must partner with god for this request to be granted we force them from their hiding places to appear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever must die for this request to be answered. In the name of Jesus, the ground opens and swallows them. Whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted we seize their peace and their sleep now. Hear me? Any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify may God answer their prayers this night. The Lord is opening my eyes. I know they are still ministering outside. Let's be patient. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing these trees. It's like a representation of families. Hold on please. I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families. And I'm looking at it. I've never seen a tree bringing out blood. Human blood. But in this vision... I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. 
Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing. Hold on. Over people is for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity, clarity. God is answering questions now by the anointing. If that fire comes from you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity, clarity. All the overflows, clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing particularly overflow one. An anointing for divine recovery. Divine recovery. Let me tell you something. Whatever leaves you can come back to your life. Are you hearing now? There are people who have lost things. I'm about to call it into your life now. And as that anointing comes on you, just know that it's your time of recovery. Lord, where are they? Where are those who have lost things that need recovery? Shakata kata kata. Shakata kata kata broskete kata. Everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere, inside, outside, outside. The grace for recovery. The grace for recovery. I release that grace now over individuals and over families. Over individuals and over families. Individuals who have lost things. Lost things. Lost opportunities. Lost opportunities. Somebody is recovering an opportunity. Somebody is recovering something that left you. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord is leading me here. There are at least four people. This grace for recovery must come upon you. I'm seeing at least four people. Something you have lost is about to look for you. Something you have lost must look for you. I force it to look for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. I told you God answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction. That collision with the anointing is what will program your testimony. And all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a strong man in four families that God is clearing out of the way. Listen, listen, I don't say things like this lightly, but I'm seeing, at least I'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people. They don't even know they are the ones. Where are they? Inside and outside, whoever, in the name of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, any man, sitting on anybody's destiny here you want to rise but they stop you you want to move but they sit on your glory i clear them out of the way now listen you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service like this mama you see that the devil wants to kill this woman with cancer. Eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her. Your mother, you are the ones who brought her. Hold the mother and two of you come. 
you two of you need deliverance first leave mama come come and stand someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit i've prayed for her but i'm looking i'm this is this your mother two of you i want to pray for you eh what you need i know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer but for you god must heal you first you will need deliverance eh? i'm not saying you are witches but i have to pray for you this is the instruction god is giving me father in the name of jesus you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement therefore i lay my hands on you in the name of jesus fire over every wicked devil in the name of jesus you came to stand in for your mother but satan has his own plan for you in the name of jesus Hi. wickedness is real i held these ladies and the lord showed me a vision i'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and i'm seeing something that looks like a pot they are writing names of people with blood blood not chalk they will write it and throw it inside the pot write it and throw it this is an Igbo family write it throw it inside the pot lord i don't know why you showed me this vision but in the name of jesus i don't care where the family is but in the name of first my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first in the name of jesus christ if you don't like the prayer point say amen to the one you believe but my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist this is someone's destiny these people are here oh I'm praying you may not even know you are the one I say it again whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name whether it's your marital destiny whether it's your breakthrough in the name of Jesus let the earth open and swallow that wicked man who say now who say now? Who say now? Who is that, please? Let her come, please, quickly. You are who say now? What's your name? Huh? Who say now? I want to pray for you. Eh? I'll pray for two of you, but you are the one I want to pray for. What's your name? From where? What state are you from? You are from FCT. Do you believe in favor? Shout it. No, you are not shouting. You have shout favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what God is bringing for you. Favor. Who say now I want to pray for you? You are who say now to madam? Please come. You too? Is it mother and daughter or you are coming by yourself? You are, you are who say now to? I'll pray for you. But this is the lady I want to speak to. You love Jesus with all your heart. I want to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family. Major breakthrough. I lay my hands right now and I command it. Let it happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Where are you from, my dear? Jalingo. Taraba. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives you a miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Every bad luck must live your life now. Eh? Every bad luck must live your life. I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go. This lady, only bad things look for her. There are people like that. When good things come, they just turn. There is a spirit that turns it away. Everybody is getting a job. Something that is simple. When is your turn? Let me tell you something. Hardship is not poverty. Hardship is a spirit. You get things, but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years. It's hardship. It's a cost. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't go, give God glory under that kind of condition. Simple things. You ask somebody out, I want to marry you. They answer you after four years. It's a cost. Are you, are you a demon? It's a cost. You start a building project, you finish after ten years. It's not a blessing. 
a hard life is worse than poverty this is what the devil has put on the life of this lady I, I take it away now in the name of Jesus and I use her as a point of contact if there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening in the name of Jesus I command whatever it is let the fire of God come upon it now let me pray for you man in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon you and I release favor in the name of Jesus favor I'm seeing someone you are into printing please let's hurry up we have to stop a few minutes now so that you are into printing you print like um, posters whatever it is you design you print banners please who is that person I want to pray for you you are into printing uh, I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing I'm not saying if you want to do it if you are currently doing it you are into it for how long? Since my, my child was a, I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. Mina? Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here? I'm serving in, in Tadzara. Because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds. I don't know. Well, may not be so much money to you, but I'm seeing something losses of at least this is a very big project that the person is even angry. I'm seeing something that even has to do with police because the person will say that you went and gave the job. All of you are into printing. What are you printing? I'm into printing. What printing? Books, everything in every press. Books. You yes. too? Your dad. All of you, I'll pray for you. You are standing in for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. We want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen something happens and destroys your life i have to pray for you where is your dad huh? he, stays in abuja. he stays in abuja that's where you stay too yes what's your name peace peace i want to pray so that we'll stop trouble eh? in the name of jesus daddy we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray every trouble we avert now you two you are into the printing where abu press. press yes you work with abu press yes you walk there now it's not your own okay but i will still pray for you in the name of jesus christ grace the one for mina i release you eh? can i pray for businesses yes, sir. can i speak over businesses huh you are into printing uh, what's your name hasana hasan you 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 need to um well I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family, but you look smart. You don't dress, you see, no shoes. Your hair is scattered, not combed. You look smart. Eh? You are my friend. I want you, it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this. It will be difficult for you to get a good wife like this. It will be difficult for you to get many good things. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. Don't say it doesn't matter. Dress well. The house.
God organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we are going to pray. It. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are into printing too? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is somebody you sew clothes. You are a serious tailor. But for a long time, this is from April. Everything just went down. I don't mean gradually down like this. It's almost as if, please, who is that person? You are a tailor. You sew clothes. You are a serious tailor, but something just happened. I'm seeing the month of April and everything just went down. You are the one? You sew clothes. Where? Django. Who knows you? If you are a serious tailor, they should know you here. Who are who, you've sewn people's clothes here? Zango. Okay, Zango. Yes. There's a shop. I'm what sorry. then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll pray for you. If you did something wrong and they pursued you, when you come here, you ask for mercy. You don't complain. Even if it's my shop and you don't do well, I will drive you. Everybody wants to succeed. So let's, let's be very honest when we are before God. Praise God. When you are before God, if you tell the truth, that's even what will provoke his mercy. You understand? If, you, if, if I employ you, don't be embarrassed, my dear, but if I employ you and you are not bringing me anything and I'm paying you, I won't I downsize and drive you. So don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you. I'm not seeing the person as a wicked person. No. Something happened and it's your fault. Eh? You need the mercy of God and God will help you. Don't make it. You see that if, if it's not revelation now, you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked. My prayer for you is that God will bless you too. Huh? But please don't be angry. I'm not seeing that person. That person did exactly what I would have done. Father, in the name of Jesus, show your daughter mercy. If you need mastery, may God improve your skill. May God improve your value. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. God will not leave you hungry. The God we serve will change your story tonight. In the name of Jesus. You experience his mercy, you experience his grace. Madam, you are a tailor. Where? Samaru Market. Samaru. Market. You have your shop? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You are a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sew their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family. It may just need... You are a very good tailor. I'm not, I'm not against you. Don't feel bad. I'll offend some people. That's what I'm seeing now. Yes, and there's problem now. They are even angry. Yes, sir. Because they are supposed to sew something for them for an occasion. Uh, and you didn't finish and now the person is really angry so these are some of the things we are talking about as God steps in let's allow his mercy just tell them sorry because you, I want, you would have been far more than you are now but there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory hold my hands he must go now to draw from you again again yeah. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Listen, I want you to mark this woman. The kind of favor this woman will enter into from this night will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. The Lord will give you favor. You are a tailor. 
why are you just coming my brother we are praying for people here hmm? father in the name of Jesus help our brother to succeed hmm? it's unbelief if God is calling a case to help people huh? you come out proudly you don't stand there you are ashamed you understand it's an act. It's You are a student and you are doing it. You people too, you are tailors. See, the tailors are now coming out. We'll pray for your business. Please, all tailors, do a good job. We believe in excellence. Don't say, I'm praying for you publicly. It's not just endorsing you to destroy people's clothes. Do a good job. Praise the Lord. Do a good job and we'll pray for you. There are too many people here. Too many school of ministry wants to do their graduation gown in two weeks we are graduating our students 243 students imagine that you get the contract to do their gown if you do a good work god will honor you if you do a nonsense work people will not endorse you just because it's the house of god praise the lord my brother you want to study where I'm a student. oh you are a student yes in the uk okay in the name of jesus christ may the lord grant you grace god will raise help for you in the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a tailor. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you. You need deliverance. I command the spirit. Hi. This lady has oppression in your dream. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God. You didn't come out for tailor, you came out by the mercies of God. You see what I'm saying? This is the tailor now. You see what let me pray for her please i see a wild animal i'm looking at this lady and i'm seeing okay. lord jesus mercy i command every legal access satan has over you when this lady gets angry she can swallow you it's not her fault it's a spirit be free now look how many people are holding one lady in the name of jesus i set you free by the power of the holy spirit let me advise you if you want to enter a relationship pray if you want to marry pray you listen to what i'm telling you you see the body of christ we don't listen and we do i'm not saying this lady is a witch please don't get me wrong but i'm saying you should pray now i'm not condemning her but imagine that you are in a relationship with this lady and you married last week you see this if this lady is angry, that spirit will manifest. No matter how strong you are, she will beat the living daylight out of you. When that spirit leaves her, she will tell you sorry. And then it will come back. This is what God is helping us to solve. Are we together? Now imagine you are a customer and just because you gave her 10,000, you insulted her. When that spirit rises, she will tear your clothes or beat you. Lord Jesus, we invoke your mercy upon her. In Jesus' name. Madam, you're a tailor too? Where? Judge. Judge. I'll pray for you. You're a tailor too? Where? You're in Nazareth State. In the name of Jesus, may God increase you. I speak to your business. Let it increase. Experience increase. Delay lives your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you're in business, please lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Please believe the prayer I'm praying for you. There is an anointing that makes people prosper. Why are you here? You are tailors. You are all tailors. What do you mean you are tailors? This gentleman, you are a tailor too? Okay, please come. You would have come out since, so that our time, you know, our time. You are all tailors. You are a tailor too? I hope we all know that this is the house of God. Please, don't, don't tell lies. If you are not a tailor here, I'm, the prayer will reach everybody. If you are not into tailoring, please don't embarrass yourself. If you are into tailoring, leave them, leave them, please. Provided you are, I don't know what is this with God and tailors, but let's pray because God wants to increase you. You look like a tailor. You see, some of you don't look like tailors. You are, you, are not, you are not dressing like tailors. This gentleman is sharp and smart. He looks like a tailor. 
Ejimi teaches that you represent your brand. If you are a man of God, you show it by the anointing. If you are a tailor, if you are a public speaker, you show it by accuracy of communication. If you are a tailor, you are marketing your products at all times. You don't say, come to my shop. No. If I cannot see your tailoring prowess on you, then I shouldn't patronize you. Father, change the lives of these great people of ours. I'm just going to lay my hands and touch your head. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. May your business step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands, please go back to your seat. In Jesus' name. That yoke leaves you now. In the name of Jesus. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Go and increase. Go and multiply, my dear. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Increase, madam. Multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Whether you're a tailor or not, after this people don't come out again. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In Jesus' name. If you're in business, please. Any kind of good, godly business, lift your hands. If you're in a bad business, repent. And do something honorable. Listen, let me mention an example of bad business. Any business that has to do with smuggling drugs. You are a thief. You are not in business. You stop it. I don't care whether you are helping young guys around Samaru connect with a snuff. That's not a business. Are we together? There are businesses that are demonic. Writing exams for people. Writing jam for people. Writing, I will never pray for you for increase. That's not a godly business. Business that has to do with you having an affair with somebody's husband, somebody's wife. It's not a good business. Prostitution, not a good business. Dirty business that has to do with ungodly things. No, no, sir. Let's be very sincere before God. But I pray sincerely from the depth of my heart. The power to prosper. The grace that can come on a business and turn it around overnight. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to be childlike enough and believe this prayer I'm praying for you. And watch what God does. Some of you, you don't have any clients, you don't have any customers some of you overnight just by this prayer by miracle service october it will be like a dream i prophesy to you some of you you have the ideas what you need is capital i declare let somebody rise up who is willing to help you in the name of jesus christ some of you what you need is an endorsement of someone credible in your field so that it will open doors for you may someone who has gone ahead of you accredit you in the name of jesus christ some of you are trying to sell properties there's nobody to buy but if someone comes to buy it god will use it to honor you i call somebody to buy it now in the name of jesus now I prophesy favor on everyone. I decree and declare tonight the main auditorium overflow. One, two, three, those following online. The kind of favor you have never seen in your life. May my God make it happen in your life now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Esther the village girl became Esther the queen through favor Ruth the hungry woman who was about to die became Ruth the wife of Boaz I don't know who I'm prophesying to but the favor that would change your story in one month I release it to you right now I release it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman there please 
There are people from January till now, you have never testified. It's not that you don't want to come out, but nothing has happened. I stand before the God of heaven and I decree and declare, may my God do something in your life that will force you to come and testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare I don't know what door has closed between you and your next level you have been knocking for a long time and that door has refused to open I open that door for you right now I open that door for you right now any terminal disease ravaging anyone's body you get healed right now two weeks you are back again you get healed three weeks you are back again i set you free right now help that i set you free right now in the name of jesus christ the only thing you know that happens in your family is fight and quarrel no love no joy when someone is about to rise a troublemaker comes i declare May the Prince of Peace May the Prince of Peace step into our homes now Step into our families now You are beautiful, you love God You are a well-mannered lady, no husband I'm led to pray this prayer you don't hear me pray it all the time but i decree and declare every lady here ready for a relationship a godly one i call your husband to your life now every gentleman who wants to marry but no job no money the devil is you the devil is using lack of finances to rubbish your life in the name of Jesus the God that can lift a man from a dunghill may that God lift our brothers here right now any project you started this year that you were hoping to have completed by now and as it is you need a miracle I release the finisher's anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ all those writing exams shakatos kata prati alakatos in the name of Jesus the grace to not only write your exams but to finish well I release it upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ All our, our brothers and sisters who travel from several places to write post UME. In the name of Jesus, we give you admission here. I don't care who you know or who you don't know. We give you admission here now. Hallelujah. School of Ministry students are writing their exams by 9 o'clock tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, grace for retention. Receive it. There are other people writing promotion exams. Others, there are, we have a lot of postgraduate students doing their PhD work, research, you know, their thesis, whatever it is. Anything that has refused to come to completion in your life, I, re I release upon you grace for completion. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point and we are done. Give me two minutes. I need to pray for our spiritual lives. Some of you started well with God, but right now you need prayers. You need serious prayers. Prayer zero. Fasting zero. Word life zero. Passion for the things of God zero. You are not bad, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. The fire. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The fire that must come upon the candle of your destiny. Sokoto Pakata. From the main hall here overflow one overflow two overflow three 
take a fresh fire for your work with God. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. Hear me? Some of you, the moment you open your Bible, it's as if something happens and you close it back. It's not normal. I decree and declare passion for the word of God. Receive it right now. Some of you used to pray seriously. You even used to attend the, the weekly prayer department meeting. But things happen. You were offended with God. And several things happen in your life. And you say, I'm, I've been praying but I've not seen results. And you stop. I release upon you grace to go back. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Hear me? Those of you who, as you are seeking money, you are forgetting God. As you are seeking marriage, you are forgetting God. It's not that you want to do so. Life is pushing you away from God. Whatever is drawing you away from God, I cause that thing now. Listen, we are rounding up. God and prosperity can go hand in hand. God and marriage can go hand in hand. Whatever must make you leave God to get it is of the devil. May it live your life forever. Now keep your hands lifted. The last prayer point. God is looking for men and women of the spirit. Simple one minute prayers that will change your life now. Lift your hands. I want to pray for something to come upon these hands. Listen. Mm. there must be an evidence if you belong to this ministry this is a supernatural ministry this is a ministry of signs wonders diverse manifestations i will not end this meeting without this impartation i'm praying now at the count of three let an unction let an ancient mantle land on someone's hand one two three Take it now. Healing anointing. Take it now. Prophetic mantle. Take it now. Grace for signs and wonders. Receive it. May your hands become healing hands. May your hands become miracle hands. Deliverance hands. Favor hands. hear me the grace to win souls like never before i know it's old school i'm both old and new school depending on the one that does not work soul winning is never old school the bible says he that winneth souls is wise i pray for you grace for a dimension evangelism through signs and wonders receive it right now Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The last prayer for you. The mantle of honor. The grace that distinguishes a man above his contemporaries. I lay my hands on my head and I prophesy to you. Carry that anointing right now carry that anointing right now experience strange levels of honor in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise every expectation you brought here whether i mentioned it or not i'm agreeing with you now within 24 hours let your miracle start Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Those of you who came from far, before you get to where you came from, you will collide with miracle after miracle. Testimony after testimony. Hallelujah. If there is anyone here in ministry, a man of God, a woman of God, you have a fellowship, you have a church, I pray for you. The fire that is here, 
carry it back to your church carry it back to your fellowship carry it back to your place of ministry in the name of jesus christ hallelujah wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus hallelujah everyone keep standing you are here our time is gone everyone please stand you are here you are worshiping with us for the first time overflow one overflow two and inside this is your first time please make your way here overflow three just make your way to the front of your projector stand and look at me let's honor them koinonia quickly <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord please keep standing two minutes we are done let's honor them they are coming may god bless all of you who continually invite people to come listen let me tell you one truth i am very honored to have the privilege to lead this campaign of bringing the reality of the power and the presence of god to people when you invite people you don't necessarily make a ministry bigger yes you increase them in numerical strength but the truth about it is that you are giving people an opportunity to have encounters hallelujah for all of you who take out time to invite people may the god i serve bless you clear the way for them as they come dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 